welcome to our webinar today. Before we get started, let us um, prepare for our national anthem for our webinar. Before we proceed, let's take a short moment to recognize our holiday, whoever we wish on them. Good morning once again, colleagues, and welcome to our webinar for this morning. And this is um, entitled Research Mentoring Strategies and hosted by the SEAT Tenureship and Mentoring Committee under the SEAT webinar series, Future Proofing and Enabling Strategies for SEAT Stakeholders. Yan po. So, kumusta naman po tayo ngayon? It is a rainy morning. And um, before we start, I would like to uh, welcome everyone again and recognize um, some of the important guests and colleagues that we have with us. Um, Sir Marish, uh, one of our speakers, and Sir Rex also. Sorry. Again. And um, we'd like to recognize also the current SEA team, Dr. Amongo and our department chairs and unit heads and uh, former uh, members of the state administration also. Uh, there's a lot of um, participants here, so I will just get back to the rest later. Again. So good morning once again, everyone. Um, to start, officially start our um, mentoring strategies webinar today, uh, We'd like to welcome the current SEA team, Dr. Amongo, for the opening remarks. Thank you, Ma'am Ani. So, good morning, everyone. Yan, ang dami natin. Nakakatuwa. So, sabi nga ni Ma'am, it's a rainy <laughs> Tuesday morning. Uh, makalimlim. So, uh, of course, before anything else, I would like to uh, greet uh, Sir Rex de Mafelis. Good morning, sir. He is one of our speaker for today. Si sir Marish, nasan na po si Sir Marish. Good morning, Sir Marish. At si, meron pa tatlo sila, di ba, Ma'am Angie? Uh, the, uh, I know there are three. Dr. Elia po. Ah, nandito na ba si Dr. Elia, ang aking mentor. So, so today, I know it's a very uh, important day again to say it. Kasi uh, one of the main goal of uh, the Ad Sayat administration is for us to strengthen our uh, mentor-mentee uh, activities in the college. So we know for a fact that uh, 
Uh, yung iba, mga seniors na natin at mga mentors natin. Yung iba naman are, are very young. And so, pag nakita mo yung profile natin, mas madami yung young generation, uh, yung ating instructor, instructors at assistant professors uh, who are still starting to engage themselves into a... Uh, uh, kumbaga, yung journey of becoming uh, becoming one of the very, very good uh, or become experts in their chosen fields. So um, uh, this would really inspire everyone, lalo ang ating mga speakers ay mga uh, scientists. So ang UP scientists kasi ay nakabase sa outcome ng mga research and extension public service activities ng isang faculty. So although meron namang considerations on the instruction part, pero I think talagang ang pinaglalabanan ang binibilang ay kung ano ang iyong na-contribute to the body of knowledge that has something to do with changing the lives of your um, uh, stakeholders. So uh, as one of the agenda nga ng uh, Sayat administration is for us to come up with a very, very good uh, protocol or somehow a guideline. That, kasi ang nangyayari sa atin, we play by the rules. We, we, we go with the flow. Pero wala talaga siya nasusulat na dapat ito yung ating guide, hindi naman guideline, but a general guideline that would uh, from time to time magre-remind sa atin kung paano natin i-implement ang isang magandang uh, mentoring system sa ating college. So ako din, I've, I've uh, learned my own way siguro kasi of course I had my advisors, yan si Dr. Elia, advisor ko po siya nung ako ay nag uh, PhD, but then I changed my I changed my uh, major so naging advisor ko si Sir Archie. So, ano, very very important yung ating mga advisors or ating mga mentors. And so, the same time wala namang mentor mentee uh, relationship kung wala yung mga mentee. So uh, as I've said, we are very, very lucky today because we will be, our speakers are the best and uh, the best researchers in our college and in our university. Dr. Elia being our UP scientist three, Dr. Rex being our scientist one, and of course, Sir Marish just applied for scientist one and I hope he will be awarded soon and given the award this coming batch. So ang gusto ang 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 envision ko din ano dapat hindi lang ko konti ang mga scientists sa SEA. Pag inkinumpirma of course si AS is a very big big uh, very big and huge college na ang daming uh, faculty doon more than 400 sila. Tayo nasa one, almost 160 na. Pero, uh, uh, ang CAPS ay nasa 200 plus sila. Pero tayo dapat uh, as, as we go on and as we grow as uh, uh, as we grow into a very, very big college uh, with the inclusion of our new uh, BS, Math E, and our MS programs, eh dapat madami din tayong mag aspire na maging UP scientists. Uh, and that would be part of the mentoring system. So habang gumagaling tayo na mga mentors, lalo tayong gumagaling din to impart to our students on how we will mold them in terms of uh, the whole the holistic approach of uh, academically uh, they are excellent with the knowledge and skills and of course the moral values 
So, uh, I think very exciting yung araw na ito dan sa prepare ng ating mentoring committee. So, before I end my, my welcome address to you, I would like to thank especially the team of uh, our mentoring team, si Ma'am Anji. Ayan, hindi ko na-memorize kung sino pa yung iba't ibang members. Of course, alam ko si Ma'am Ani kasama siya dyan. So, uh, salamat po sa pagtulong at pagsuporta. Ito ay hindi lang para sa ating individually but of course it's for the whole Sayat family and for uh, the whole uh, Sayat team. So kailangan po natin ito at sana po uh, yung araw na ito ay the rest of the uh, the half day po tayo uh, the rest of the day will be really a fruitful day. So again, thank you. Ayun na naman, ito na naman. As, and I, I, I am saying, I am always saying that as we move act as one, act as one, one love, one say yet. So good morning po sa ating lahat. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Amongo. Uh, yeah, we actually do look forward you know, to the time that we would have a lot more UP scientists from Sayat. Sana after so many years, eh, nagbibilang na rin tayo ng sindami ng CAS. Kasi as um, we know naman, we are into the technology. And this is really something that we have as a very big asset in Sayat. Ang dami nating um, capabilities. And this is a very nice way to start our um, next few years ayan, with the very best speakers today and of course um marami pa tong naka ano naka plano in the future i'll say it i'm sure so ayan hindi ko na patatagalin pa to let's move on to the first speaker excited na po ba kayo pa heart naman po ko ano excited na tayo kasi ako excited na ayan mas speaker kasi I natin yes ma'am ma ma ani before I leave, kasi po meron po akong 9 o'clock na kasunod, pwede po ba tayo mag-picture para kasama po ako Ay, bago mag-speech? Bago mag-speech, si, sino ba ko na? Si Sir... Si Sir Mari. Si Sir Mari. Si Sir Mari. Okay, okay, so, so, Sir Mari. Yan. Thank you po. Magsuklay-suklay na po tayo. And okay lang po yung woke up like this. Naintindihan po natin yung nakadalawang taon na tayo dito sa anong setup. So, ayan. Um... I'd like to invite everyone to open their videos. Yeah. Miss Jane, ikaw ba magkitake ng ating picture? Yes, ma'am. Okay po. Mahala ka na mag-cue. Yeah. Let's just wait for... Good morning. The, um, Good morning, say yes. Ayan. Ayan. Ang ganda. Ayan. So, pa-open po ng cam. Okay lang po. Medyo bibigyan namin kayo ng konting time na mag-suklay kung gusto po natin. Ano, hindi mo pa like this. <laughs> Thank you ulit to everyone for coming. It is indeed a very ano to, um, great honor to be with everyone today. Meron pa po mga habol. So yun pong um, Zoom background natin, if you want to um, use this, nasa chat na po, yan, pwede natin siyang i-access chat. Yun pong mga hindi makakapag-open ng cam for one reason or another, we'd like to invite you na ano, paklik na lang po ng heart para naman may proof of life daw. Ang <laughs> tawag yata doon, ayan po. Paklik na lang ng heart. Check nyo na lang kung nakaklik pa siya the whole time as we take the picture. Miss Jane, ready na po? Okay po. Ilang ka na lang para nakasmile tayo ng maganda. Um, <laughs> sa first panel po muna tayo. Ready po? One, two, and three. Next panel. One, two, and three. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Sige you po. po. Thank you po, ma'am. Uh -uh, Maglilisin na lang po ako. Thank you. Okay po, ma'am. So, again, uh, welcome again. Yan, dami ko na sabi, welcome wala kanina. So, um, Ms. Jane, pa-share na lang mo. Thank you. 
Yeah, as we start our morning, we are very privileged to have three um, of the best speakers that we can tap for this event. And uh, the first speaker is a licensed civil engineer who graduated from the civil engineering department, UPLB 1997, and further earned his graduate degree in Master of Science in Civil Engineering in UP Diliman in 2004. After this, he pursued a Doctor of Engineering at degree at uh, Tokyo Institute of Technology, completing the degree in 2009. He has been serving as a faculty member in the Department of Civil Engineering for 24 years, teaching structural and construction engineering courses. His research interest includes strength and durability of concrete, as well as corrosion of steel, and he is currently involved in the research funded by the Fisher DOST, entitled Development of Nanosilica-Based Anti-Corrosion Coating. Colleagues, it is my privilege to welcome to our Zoom stage the former UPLB Vice Chancellor for Planning and Development, Dr. Marish S. Madlagunay. A virtual applause naman po. Thank you. Uh, can uh... Am I audible? Uh, is my audio clear? Hello. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning. Yes, good morning to everyone. Good morning, Dean uh, Rosan. Good morning, colleagues. To all our uh, good morning. Senior, senior faculty. Uh, I would like to thank uh, also the SAYAT uh, uh, Committee on uh, Mentoring and Tenureship for this invitation, si Dr. Uh, Anjali. Uh, Dok Angelina, dali mo ako dun, ha? <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Hindi ako makatanggi, sorry. And then, uh, of course, uh, sa ano na rin, sa aking uh, department, mga colleagues ko sa department, uh, I hope, uh, I hope uh, nandito kayo uh, uh, to, to, to see, you know, to, to watch mga strategies for for mentoring. Uh, kanina na mention ni, ni Dean Rose, no? yung ating mga speakers for today. Uh, puro mga, mga scientists, no? mga, mga talagang madaming experience sa pag-mentoring. So, although konti ang aking experience pa sa mentoring, I would, I would uh, definitely want to, to share uh, with uh, this uh, experience with, with all of you. All right, uh, I hope you can uh, see a PowerPoint uh, presentation now. It's still loading, sir. Okay. All right. Uh... Hey, so let me start off. Uh... Research mentoring strategies. Okay, so my uh, my starting a slide would be to be a mentor, be a mentee first. Okay, so be involved in projects, watch and learn from the masters. Okay, so parang madaling uh, sabihin, no? Pero how do we do it? How do we how do we get ourselves involved? in projects okay, so how do we how do we get involved and then what do we do how do we do this watch and learn from the masters i thought of uh, sharing with you my experiences uh, as as a mentee first okay from my experiences in in some projects i was involved in this project uh, engineering design and in and financial implication of a proposed uh, UPLB landfill. Uh, who are my mentors here? Dr. Sundo, Dr. Walfredo Rola, uh, that time from the College of uh, Human Ecology, and uh, Professor Moises A. Dorado. Okay, so, uh, unang sabak ko sa project, puro mga, how do you say this? Mga, mga macho at mga pogi at mga you know mga light 
uh, people. Okay? So, alam nyo naman, when when uh, Sir Buboy Dorado, Sir uh, Wally, and Sir Sundo ay pinagsama-sama natin, no? the, the mood is, is always light and uh, happy. No? Now, uh, this is... Uh, this is a, a good opportunity for me to to get involved in, in a project. Now I'm a lucky uh, faculty, I, I would say that uh, hindi ko na hinanap yung yung first project ko, no? yung yung first project yung lumapit sa akin. And uh, the they 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 uh, made sure they made sure that uh, I was uh, comfortable no? as a member of the project. Okay? So how did they do that? Okay? When, uh, siguro makikita nyo dyan, um, Dr. Marlo B. Sundo, because uh, from the start, ano siya, naging uh, mentor ko siya. Uh, isa siya sa mga uh, naging instructor ko nung ako ay college pa. So basically, alam ni... Dr. Sundo lahat ng aking capabilities no? as an engineer. Kaya niya ako siguro sinali dito sa sa project na ito. Okay? So, when, uh, because they believed in me na, kaya, <coughs> na ako ay part, maging part dito sa project na ito. And, uh, and siguro also, I'm not sure, no? baka naman wala na rin silang choice wala na makuha kaya kinuha nila ako okay so when 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 i was there with the project simple lang no i watch and learn from from these three guys okay how do they package a proposal okay how 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 do you discuss with partners how do you how do you discuss the terms okay the scope the limitations okay what are exactly your deliverables ito yung uh, these are these are the first few things that i learned from this project okay? it has to be clear okay you don't want uh, to undercommit or overcommit the the team to your uh, to your uh, to your funder no? or to your partner okay now another important thing that i have learned from this uh, project is pwede pala ito no that the project that the output of the project ay pwede pa lang i-publish okay so you know dito na alam niyo naman okay and uh, uh, our life here in the university we we have to publish okay we have to publish so that uh, one day we will get uh, we will get promoted or we will get we will have a chance to you know to join uh uh, incentive programs of the university. I have a some some sort of a unique project. Na if if you will take a look at the title, I, I joined this project: special assistance for project implementation. Um, Unang tingin, parang hindi makita yung angle dito ng isang civil engineer. Okay? But then, of course, my, my mentors here, uh, Dr. Franco. Okay? Dr. Franco is a retired uh, faculty member of SEAT of the, of the IAE. Dr. Dix Bravo. Okay? Dr. Dix Bravo is from uh, UP Diliman. Uh, actually, she graduated here in uh, UPLB, but uh, she's a member of the faculty of UP Diliman under the School of Urban Planning and uh, uh, School of Urban and Regional Planning, so SERP. Okay? And then, of course, uh, our very own from SIPAF, Professor Blan Pantoja. So here, actually, uh, again, no? Just like in my first experience, uh, project one, project one, they 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 made me feel comfortable. Okay, they they assigned me the tasks that uh, that is 
the tasks that are needed from a civil engineer. Okay. And then of course, uh, I learned tools, new tools, okay? Gathering and reviewing data from project documents and other sources, KII or key, key informant interviews, focus group discussions, ito lahat. In fact, dito ko natutunan lahat ito. If, if, uh, if, uh, if uh, hindi ako sumali sa project na to, then baka uh, until now, hindi ko alam gawin itong mga tools na ito no? uh, in, in a project. Okay. Uh, from an engineer, uh, I learned to be more of a, uh, how do you say that, a member of a social, social scientist uh, team. Okay. Now, for this particular project, our, our objective is really to troubleshoot uh troubleshoot the project because there there was something wrong with the with the help for katubig agricultural advancement project okay so that project something went wrong so our team needs to troubleshoot that uh, that project and uh there is a component there called the uh, rural infrastructure component okay so that that is where a uh, civil engineer comes in so that that is where i i, I came in no? uh, all the components of uh, the civil engineering uh, aspect uh, was handled or were handled by by a civil engineer uh, roads from roads to to drainage and uh, even the even the structural component of the irrigation okay so so do na ko tumulong okay Now here, actually, I, I, I got to experience uh, working with several, really several mentors, no? but just to name the, the biggest, just to give you the biggest names, no? Dr. Rex Victor o. Cruz, Professor Marlo Mendoza, Dr. Antonio Carandang. Okay, so of course, ano na, yung mauna po ang ating uh, mentor na si Dr. Antonio Carandang. Um, Siguro dagdag ko na rin dito uh, si na Dr. Ike Tolentino, former Vice Chancellor Ike Tolentino, Dr. Juan Pulhin, Dr. Uh, I sorry, Professor Sani Kerihero, okay? And and many many more, okay? Ito this is my first uh, ano siguro uh, how do you say that big interdisciplinary project consisting of foresters uh, engineers, of course. Okay, so kasama ko po dito yung mga engineers from Sayat, sina Dr. Luyun, uh, sina Prof. Bubuy again, sina, sina Prof. Balyaran, and uh, many more. No? Mga sociologists, economists. Okay, so it is good no, to be part of this group so that you can see the perspective of other uh, specialists. Okay? So for example, um, Tayo, mga engineers, we might be building, we might be trying to plan on building something and then uh, from another, uh, from a viewpoint of, of, of let's say, an, an environmentalist, okay? So makikita yung, yung limitation of those plans, okay? In, uh, in, in this project also, I, I worked with the, uh, with uh, Professor Mero uh, from uh, Marawi State University. I would say in a good way, no? not, not really in a bad way, that Professor Mero is, uh, madami, siyang, madami siyang alam, no? para bang, uh, uh, how do you say that, a uh, jack of all trades, parang ganun, the professor. Na whenever whenever uh, Sir Buboy, me, um, Sir Enteng, needs data or needs a take off point in order for us to to process the data make a model it seems like lagging may sagot sa amin si si prof mero okay mm -hmm. so why is this uh, nakita namin 
si Prof Mero ano meron siyang uh, that time meron siyang uh, huge collection of of data already okay so whenever ang kagandahan kay Prof Mero whenever na mention namin yung mga data needs namin ah ito kopyahin mo to ganun yung ano niya eh ganun yung yung uh, attitude niya sa amin napaka ano niya napaka generous okay um he he will he will even state the the name of the tanda pa niya the name of the project the past project uh, here you you go to this project uh something is mentioned there about modeling etc yung kailangan ninyo okay so ganun siya ka ganun siya ka accommodating and uh we 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 felt that uh uh in addition no, to the team although si Prof Mero is just one of the resource person of the of the project no, malaking bagay siya sa amin as a, as a mentor no sa amin that time mga mga ano kami noon mga nakikinig talaga kami sa sa mga payo niya and then of course uh you know when when working with several agencies kasi that time we work with DNR DPWH na po ko okay so dito ko talaga nakita yung ano eh um i i saw the 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 skill the management skill of of these big guys no si lalo si lalo si of course si din na siya ngayon din din marlo mendoza no uh, uh para bang nakita ko one na nakita ko while he was speaking no? I, i would like to i would like to speak that way to to a big audience one day parang yun yung pumasok sa sa isip ko eh kasi uh, when, when he speaks no it it seems para bang walang problem okay it seems that for each problem he already knows how to deal with it and then he he expresses it he shares it with the audience uh na para in in a way na para bang kayang-kaya naman niyang gawin eh there is a there is a solution to that always always positive Okay so uh, siguro uh, because of his experience na rin alam niyo si si Prof Prof Marlo Mendoza was was once an ASEC eh di ba sa sa DNR so nandoon na yung yung confidence niya to to deal no to, to deal with several people and several agencies to deal with several people and several agencies um now special mention here of course is Marawi kasi that time uh hindi ano and how they say that uh we have to we have to put a little bit of a no we have to 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 really put some some uh, safety uh how do you say that safe um when we went there when we went there we had a special uh, accommodation no we were accommodated by by some groups that would take care of of the safety of the team no kasi that time Marawi is in uh, uh, the political uh, the political situation in Marawi is really not so not so stable that time that time um so again no as as uh, as a mentee na natutunan ko yon na Ah, kailangan pala ganun din no? uh, we have to we have to to set aside a little bit of an investment no for 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 our safety no we, for our security and safety uh, several years after that third project uh, ito yung time na to i was ano, i was already a, a vice chancellor at the planning and the office of the planning and development Office of the Vice Chancellor for Planning and Development. Nakakuha kami ng ganitong project, the UPLB an Energized Community-Based Sustainable Energy Research Program. Okay? For the first time, um, I experienced being a program, a program leader. Okay? So parang uh, a little bit uh, higher level. Okay? But, but here, okay? actually, I, consider, I still consider myself a mentee from uh, my bosses are shown here no Dean Amongo Dr Sundo Dr Paras and uh, Dr uh, Fajardo okay because the program involves energy okay 
and uh, the program involves um uh, e mga e e technologies okay so the the how do you say that the components from the e e technology came from Dr. Amongo and uh, Dr. Sundo no? tinatawag kami diyan na e tractor at e vehicles okay but of course to to give power no to electricity to those two doon naman pumasok si na Dr. Para si Vice Chancellor Para at si si Dr. Fajardo okay because they know solar they know they know uh, wind okay wind power and of course uh, uh water no high hydro hydropower now we in uh, or mini mini hydropower in this project okay so madami akong natutunan sa kanila okay uh, other tools no I, i i will call them tools no in in uh, in additional no? additional tools in running a project no needs and demands assessment perception survey design and testing sustainable management plan okay and then and then also i got to experience kasi madami na silang experience that time sa mga projects natuto din ako mag-handle mag mag mag, uh, admin, mag administer no ng ng isang ng isang program in terms of its finances, you no know, contracts, uh, procurement, okay? At least uh, natutunan ko 'yan, no? How, how do we when when we have the money for a program, how do we spend the money? Let's say nasa ano siya, nasa foundation yung pera. O paano kunwari na sa UPLB yung pera? So those are the those are the 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 points, no, that the were uh, were taught to me by 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 my mentors itong sina Dr. Ramongo. Ayo ko malaw. Ayun. Okay? Now um of course yung output ng program no walang uh Uh, sa tingin ko ang pinaka-importanting output ng program na ito is the equipment and training for the community. Now here um, this is uh, this is important, okay? Output, the term output. When it has it has to be like as concrete, no? as concrete, as hard as possible. Now in this in this uh, program uh, nakita ko no as a, as a mentee na at yun pala yung para bang higher ang impact okay ng isang program kasi you know nandoon no para bang the engineering skills okay was used and applied and then that led to this to this output okay so i think isa yan sa mga important na na dapat sabihin ko for today no because ito yung ano eh this this makes the community happy parang napaka fulfilling from 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 a project uh, implementer or from a program implementer na at the end of the project there is something there left to the community for them to use no for them to to make their lives uh, easier maybe or for them to experience Uh, technologies like this no kasi alam naman natin no maraming pa rin naman talagang communities na you know uh, we have to reach out to them and uh, give them give them something no give them give them something to 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 how do you say that um makatulong sa kanilang pamumuhay no na walang walang masyadong impact to to the environment or to to their political system there in that community so yun yung kagandahan dito sa programa na ito and in fact uh, ang kagandahan pa dito we we made sure okay we made sure that this this output would last would be sustainable no for that 
community. Uh, si si Dr. Art Pajardo that time made sure na merong sustainable uh, plan, management plan no? para para tuloy-tuloy yung yung paggamit and tuloy-tuloy yung uh, yung pagmaintain, pagmaintain ng mga equipment so that they will use the equipment properly for their community. So uh, ito talaga kitang-kita ko how pag nandun po kayo doon sa community, how happy the, the 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 children were, okay, yung mga bata nung nagkaroon sila ng ilaw, nagkaroon sila ng ng power for refrigerator, nagkaroon sila ng ng power for uh, for uh, even for uh, tawag dito for their uh, transport system, no? Kasi that time talagang ano eh, uh, the the roads are uh, really rough and uh, na uh, tawag dito nagbabaha. So paano makakatulong itong dalawang systems na ito and of course the power for these systems no so naka naka nakaka how do you say that nakakataba ng puso no? na na nakatulong kami doon sa community na yon so siguro yung mga mentors ko yun din ang tinuro sa akin no so um, it is that that output that is uh, most important at the end then of course uh, ano naman ito for for our ano na rin, for our uh, self development no as as a faculty self improvement okay nakakuha kami ng output okay so ito rin yung payo ko sa inyo okay whenever you have uh, when you got get involved in projects or in programs uh, you maximize the the opportunity no you write papers about it and then you, you just don't write no you 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 share it to the scientific community uh use use it in international conferences okay uh you'll never know ito nga nagkaroon pa kami ng mga best paper awards no dr amongo got a best paper awards award in an international conference and uh, of course dr sundo also got a, an international a, a national conference award uh best best uh, presentation award and uh, what else? Okay, we produce manuals. Okay, so manuals. Uh, if, if you will think about it, para bang hindi siya talaga wala siya sa culture, okay, uh, ng ating uh, UPLB community. But actually, manuals ay ma ano yan, uh, importanting output ng isang program um, so that. Uh, you know at least locally no doon sa tinulungan mo uh, meron tayong guide na iniiwan sa kanila okay my present project okay, ito is still ongoing kasi ito ay na actually dapat tapos na to kaya lang na extend siya for a few months uh, ano kasi to na dali ng well of course hindi lang naman ako madami naman talaga tayo na mga projects na naapektuhan ng pandemic no? I got this project eh, during the height of the pandemic. So, ang hirap talagang kumilos nung una. So, they, they gave me an extension until 2023. Okay, so, again, I experienced being a leader here. So, this is my parabang second time no, to, to, lead, to lead the project. Okay, pero, you know, in this project, really, hindi pa din ako, ano eh, hindi pa rin purely ako nagmentor more of a mentee pa din okay that time uh, i i i was guided by by several mentors in, uh, in even in the proposal stage no dr amongo was there dr razal of for college of forestry was there um, of course dr engelbert peralta was there dr milagros peralta was there so from from the proposal stage up to the implementation stage no, nandun sila uh, they guide me in several aspects okay now the thing is uh, nanotechnology ano din kasi ito this is inter uh, interdisciplinary it's not just for civil engineering okay nandiyan especially for this particular material no nandiyan yung tulong ng mga materials engineer okay so Meron meron ako dito ng um, 
uh, experts from physics, no? si Dr. Alvin Tapia, experts from chemistry, of course, Dr. Mila Peralta, experts from the field of materials engineering, uh, mas bata pa nga sa akin, eh, no? sina, sina Francis, Francis Mulimbayan, and uh, Ian, si, si Sir Ian Opaco, Okay. So para may exchange kami doon. They, they, they teach me, I also teach them. And they learn from me and I also learn from them. Okay. Uh, kasi magkaiba eh. No? Magkaiba, magkakaiba kami ng, ano, ng, ng, expert, ng expertise, ng, ng, ng specialization. Okay. Now here, this is maybe my, my direct first time to directly mentor research staff. Kasi this is my... Uh, kasi nung una nung, nung previous projects more of yung sina Dr. Amongo, sina Dr. Bax, sila yung talagang directly nung nagme-mentor ng project staff like uh, yung mga ano natin no yung we, we call them mga URAS, di ba? Mga University Research Associates or mga mga SRS, no? Science Research uh, uh, Specialists. So this time talagang ako na no I I I experienced firsthand directly um, mentoring the research staff. Okay, so yung mga natutunan ko noon no, from from my from my past projects, kahit pa paano tinuturo ko dito sa aking mga project staff. Okay, which are the supplies that I have to pri to prioritize? How do we uh, prepare the 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 reports? No, how do we work within the the LIB itong mga to while while practicing while development developing the skill tinuturo ko na rin doon sa aking mga mga project uh, staff okay it, it it looks it looks easy no kasi working with LIB pero kasi sometimes no especially especially during the the project implementation tapos nasa loob tayo ng isang pandemya okay you you have to really make uh, adjustments no? so that you know you can extend the time you can reprogram the budget you can whenever the the supply the procurement of the equipment or the supply is delayed you have to innovate okay yun yung isang natutunan ko kina ano sa kina Dr. Mila Peralta Dr. Engelbert Peralta you cannot really say to the to the funder for example ang funder nitong project na ito is Pichard I cannot tell them, sir, uh, you sec, uh, you sec, sir, uh, secretary, sir. Wala po akong uh, percent accomplishment kasi po, uh, I was not able to procure the equipment needed for this project because there was a pandemic. No, it was it was as simple as no. Okay, they told me that you have to innovate. You try. Okay, you have, you try. You 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 go to the physics group. You go to the to the IAE group, baka meron kang magamit doon na equipment. Similar, a similar equipment okay, na maaaring mag-simulate mag ng iyong uh, test. Okay? You do not just rely, kasi in, in, in instances like this, dito papasok yung, ano mo, yung pagiging, uh, pagiging innovative. All right? So, yung, with, that, with that advice, no, sinunod ko yun. No? Uh, it's it's just a good thing of course hindi lahat <laughs> hindi hindi talaga magawa ng paraan lahat but some no some nagawa ng paraan uh, through the help of all those uh, uh, experts no sina Dr. Alvin and mga experts natin from from the IAE so with that isipin niyo na lang kung kung wala kang mai-present no if 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 it it comes to reporting the 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 progress of your report and you would right away say there that uh, you have no progress no parang uh, simply saying nakaka mahihiya ka talaga no mahihiya ka talaga because as the project leader ano eh dapat kahit pa paano meron kang output meron kang progress na maipakita because the funder is there. They pro they provided you with the money. They 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 gave you the opportunity to to do a project. So you have to give them. You have to give back something to them. All right. <clears throat> I 
And then of course, no, kasi nga nasanay na tayo from past projects that we really have to publish, no, papers from this project. So, ito yung mga output namin, conference papers, no, journal publication, and uh, ito, tatlong bago. Okay? I, I, I have to put it as an output. Very fulfilling to train na personnel. Okay? Naka, merong, meron kang personnel na naturuan, meron kang studyante na naturuan. Okay? Even thesis, okay? you, can, you can help them graduate. Okay? So alam nyo naman, no? if you help students graduate, ano yan, there is a big snowball effect doon sa student saka doon sa kanyang sa kanyang pamilya kaya very very fulfilling ang makatulong sa estudyante and then of course eto no first time in my life application for patent okay so lagi ko tong nadidinig from from our uh, seniors diba na one good culture is really not just to publish but but to to apply for a patent okay? ito uh, aminin ko wala pa hindi ko pa masyado itong na master no or wala pa talaga sa culture ko na parang ano ko lang ang ang mind setting ko is just to to publish papers pero ito pala is importante no uh, you'll never know okay baka meron ka lang palang na invent okay something good and uh, you try no you try to you try to you try to apply for for a patent okay now Andiyan naman ang TTBDO, TTBDO will help you will 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 monitor, will help you uh, in your application for a, for a patent, uh, local or or international patent. Ah, uh, uh, ulit gumalaw. Okay. Ayan. All right. So here, no, uh, I pass the skill to I try as much as I can, the skill to my mentees. No, the, the, all the things that I've learned from my mentors, I pass them to my mentees. No? From the technical point of view to the administrative skill and so on. Okay? So you have to, how do you, how do you package a proposal? Okay? How do you procure your supplies and equipment? Okay? How do you craft the contracts for your people? No? And how do you submit, prepare and submit the, the program, the progress reports? Okay. Um, if, if, uh, kasi ito, no, sa akin, these, these are like the, the basics so that you will be like a stress free leader in, in implementing the, in implementing the project. You, I think you have to master all these, uh, skills. Now, uh, to let this is like a second part of my presentation. I try to get research project, okay? Because when when you have a research project, para bang it 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 makes life a little bit easier, no? To 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 mentor somebody because you already have, you know, the funds, okay? To use for for your project for your research. Okay, so sa akin, ito yung mga pwede, na, pwede ninyong pasukan. Okay? Basic research, EIDR of the OBPAA, and of course the OST is there. In the case of, ano kasi, in the case of uh, the Department of Civil Engineering or sa Civil Engineering, um, uh, pictured ang, ang, I think, you know, is the best uh, institution of the DOST na pwede hinga natin ng Pondo. Okay, whenever I have a funded research project, okay, maliit ba yan, malaki, I made sure that uh, I set up the laboratory. No, I I make I I I make make sure that kahit papano I add to the equipment of the working laboratory in the department, either in terms of you know equipment materials experiment materials office supplies okay now this is the, the font is in bold kasi this is really my my how do you say that strategy my tactic towards mentoring my my advices my, my undergrad advices i slice the topic 
the project topic into several bits, okay? Several bits in order for me to help my advices. No? So once I distribute them to my to my advices, no? Then I I noon ako na, no? I introduce the project so para makita nila, okay? And then uh, makikita din nila yung tasks na pwede nilang gawin and they can use the the thesis no as their as their program no as their project in in implementing the the activities for the task okay so para bang two birds no two birds with one stone no you get you get to you get to uh uh nagagawa mo yung objectives mo doon sa project okay at the same time your students ay nakikinabang okay by by getting a thesis topic and then uh, doing it no? uh, getting a thesis out of it alam niyo malaking bagay kasi yung ano eh yung uh, once once you give a topic to your undergraduate student it's really a big deal i always hear this from from uh, our uh, mentor at the department si Dr. Seden Miranda ito yung alam niyo naman siya yung aming chair there for a long time our leader in the, at the department for a long time and i quote din lagi niya sinasabi sa amin my advisor in Cornell University always tell me that 50% of the work is done once the topic is identified okay so can you imagine 50% of the work is done na raw okay so true naman okay kasi it's like your undergraduate student is in the dark eh dahil hindi niya alam kung saan direction pa siya pupunta so once once uh, you given you give no wisdom the light to that student by giving a topic okay then or leading him leading him or her to to a topic then 50% of the work is is done and then i always use this also to my to my advices no okay, i i learned this from a uh, previous uh, former chair also of the department okay uh, that time when i was taking my master's degree uh, malaking tulong si dr william tal sa akin ito lagi niyang sinasabi your topic is not necessarily about studying a whole bicycle it is about studying one of the screws of the bicycle so you you zero in on something okay you zoom in on something and then you try to to make a topic out of that okay do not solve the problem of the philippines okay kahit na a bit lang no a bit of a contribution would be a good topic already for a thesis now in most cases <laughs> this is a problem for me uh, i don't have the the funds uh, to to do research because uh, either hindi ako nakapag-apply or kung nag-apply man ako, it was not approved. Okay? So, what do I do? Well, life has to go on. Ika nga. No? When I do not have a funded research project, I make do with what the laboratory has. Uh, we are lucky in the department because kahit pa pa, no, our predecessors have already, how do you say that, set up, set up the the laboratory with the basics well, there is a universal testing machine there there is an oven there the balance the analytical balance are there so yung mga basics nandoon no may may meron na kaming pwedeng pagmulan okay so some would be minor okay relatively of course relatively minor so as much as possible minimum na lang yung cost okay that will be shouldered by 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 the advisee no? by the student and then of course i also use this technique okay i try to to ask help okay so call a friend ikaw nga no madami tayong friends na laboratory biomech is there nanotech lab is there uh, biotech is there no? other labs madami pang labs so, yung sa soil yung sa chemical engineering yung sa chemistry okay in fact alam niyo minsan yung as simple as yung are you familiar with the silver nitrate no sa because we use silver nitrate in in ano in checking the checking the penetration of fluoride ions in specimens okay para siyang, for us no 
it's a very basic uh, supply, uh, very basic ingredient. Pero napakahirap pa lang i-procure nun kasi ano daw yun, ginagamit na material for for explosives. Okay? So, sino yung tumutulong sa amin dyan? Of course, no? andyan ang chemistry, alright? Andyan ang chemistry and even uh, biotech. So, sometimes binibigyan nila kami ng ng material. No? Kasi we just need a little bit. No? Just just a small amount will will help us in the implementation of the research. How do I handle my advices? Well, ito yung ideal management system na gusto ko. Okay, na gusto ko. Okay? But, uh, but really, in reality, I only have this. Okay? It's like a, a one, one is to one uh, system. I am the advisor and I have an advisee. So, my advisor, my advisee reports to me, and I guide my my advisee no, as 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 direct as possible. No? Now, what are my duties as the advisor, as the as the mentor? Well, I provide the laboratory environment. Okay, so I have to make sure that my advisee know the my advisees know the tasks, the experimental activities. So how do I do that? Lalo tayo, no? We are handling a lot of teaching load. We are handling a lot of admin load. Okay? So my technique is, kasi if, if I will do it really uh, one at a time, uh, kakapusin ako sa oras. So I do this by group. It's like, uh, uh, actually, I, I learned this when when I was in uh, in Japan. no? In, in, when I was in Japan, kasi my, my professor was involved in a lot of uh, administrative uh, assignments. So, uh, ang ginagawa niya is meron kaming group team meetings every now and then. Okay? So, each each uh, group, no, for each group, hinati niya kami, no, ikaw, para bang, oh, Marish, you will lead the corrosion group or uh, Nishida-san, you will lead this this group, etc. Okay? So, so, merong mga mini, mini groups, no, mini teams. Okay? So that's, that's what I do. Okay? Uh, I have this like uh, the rice hull ash group, the, the bamboo ash group. This is the, this is the, the, the other groups and so on. No? So they will, they will report to me one at a time by, by teams, by groups, not individually. Okay? Uh, also, ang kagandahan yan, if you have this group, no? You can simulate like a presentation, a practice presentation. So my advices, me, my my all the other advices are there as audience, okay? And then they, the the student will perform a practice presentation. So para mahahasa siya, no? Yung kanyang confidence, magkakaroon din siya ng confidence to, you know, humarap sa isang audience. A medyo na ano lang to, this this technique, this tactic ay medyo natigil. <laughs> simply because nagkaroon tayo ng ano eh nagkaroon tayo ng ng pandemic no so naging online ang mga ang mga presentation now he this one this one i learned na in the department okay so i want to share this with you okay, siguro yung ibang departments are also doing this okay in our department there is an output by the student by the advisee it, it's what we call the eight page summary now the eight-page summary, uh, Dr. Sundo and I have a different approach to this. We we try to to put it in a in a format, in a format ng isang journal publication already. Okay. Now why is that? Because you know, hindi mo masabi, no? The 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 work, kahit na yun ng isang undergraduate student, especially yung mga laude material natin na stud na studyante yung trabaho po nila is publishable and we all, we have already done this in the past no si Dr. Sundo, Dr. Safra, uh, Dr. Velasco nagawa na nila ito, nagawa na namin to no? Either we publish the paper sa international conference or sa isang journal no? um, we we publish the the works of yung mga laude students namin, Di Masaka, Ronquillo uh, Blasco and uh, etc. Now, why is this important? Because we we felt na one day these people might you know 
go into the direction na na medyo hawig sa karir natin, di ba? As a, as a faculty, they might they might go into a master's degree later on or even a PhD. They might go to the academy later on. And ganun na nga actually yung nangyari. Okay? Ganun na nga yung nangyari. Uh, Jonathan Lasco that time naging instructor namin. Actually not not for a long time. Uh, you know Jed, okay? You know Jed uh, our faculty Jed uh, Agire. Uh, Jed is also uh, naturuan din namin siya, okay? Na you try to publish your work in a conference paper or in a journal and look at him now, no? He is now uh, uh, on 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 really on that direction, no? Nag-aaral na siya so sa PhD and hopefully pagbalik niya, uh, he will, no? He will continue that culture no, no, of publishing and even uh, doing uh, projects here at the university, matulungan ng university. Uh, I, I think ito yung mga susi, tala, ito yung isa sa mga susi no, na nag-inspire doon sa mga estudyante natin na magkaroon ng ganong kultura. Now, not all. Okay, hindi, hindi po nag-work lahat. Uh, siguro 50% or even higher. 60 to 70 percent. Um, kasi uh, alam nyo naman, no, sa, sa kalakala natin ngayon, lalo mga civil engineer, uh, once we train them, once we get that, once they get that skill, uh, wala eh. No? The, 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 the temptation of, of uh, serving the university, going to research is natatalo nung, ano eh, nung, nung isang temptation. Yung yung Kasi malak malaki po ang salary pa rin eh, sa sa private uh, pagiging engineer no sa isang private lalo na sa international uh, group no uh, kaya yon uh, marami pa rin no? marami pa rin yung nakakawala but still no we are happy na meron pa rin no nakakaisa dalawa no nakakaisa or dalawang uh, estudyante na nagpo-pursue uh, ng ng research Okay and then they know how to do the research no? kasi naturuan natin sila. Uh, I learned this from Dr. Sundu din itong mga tactics na ito, okay? Encourage publication, how do I do that? Okay? So ako personally kasi I was guided by Dr. Sundu. Nagkaroon kami ng senior junior tandem. Whenever we write paper papers, we are a tandem. No? Whenever we we try to present our output, we are a tandem. Okay? So, siguro yun yung magandang share ko dito sa presentation na ito. Baka in your case, no, magkaroon kayo ng, ng katandem. Alright. Now, of course, uh, i-guide nyo na rin yung inyong katandem. <laughs> you try to guide them. Uh, ano ba yung better conferences to join? Uh, for In our case, uh, we try to, meron kaming mga suki no, we call them suki na mga conferences. We, we always go there and present our papers there sa PICE. Okay, yung ATARS. ATARS is like the Tokyo Tech uh, Society. No, yung, kasi kami ay mga alumni ng Tokyo Tech. So, we, we use that society. Yung mga, how do you say that? They're, they they invite us no, to, to several conferences that, that they organize and then we join them in those conferences. Of course, ISAT is there, no? Yung ating ISAT, so tayo kasi we UP is UP and UPLB is a member of that uh, uh, ISAT. Uh, let me end by ito, no? With this slide. I maintain the network that I have. I try to add to that network, okay? So Yung aking mga Japanese professors, former lab mates, no? Japanese and other uh, international students na nakasama ko noon when I was uh, in Tokyo Tech. No? I try to, to, to keep it, no? yung network na yun. Okay? Uh, because it is through these networks where you learn new ideas. Okay? Kaya meron dyan, equals new ideas, new topics. Okay? You are up to date with the problems that they are troubleshooting or trying to solve or contributing to solve. You are, uh, you are, you also have a 
a way of sharing what you have. Okay? So, importante na makita din nung, nung mga kasamahan mo kung ano na yung yung uh, inaaral mo ngayon. Uh, where, where are you now? Kasi, if, if my if my if my professor will ask me, oh Marish, uh, what have you been doing lately? Uh, sir, I, when I report to him, sir, I am now involved in in um, in in uh, serving the community uh, and then of course uh, he will he will he will uh, advise me oh don't don't forget no? your 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 what you have learned uh, your skill is still on corrosion on and in concrete no you, as much as possible you try to apply what you have learned to your to your projects wag kang masyadong lalayo okay uh, be guided. Um, matanda na siya, no? retired na siya, pero still, no? very, ano pa rin siya sa akin, very active no? in, in giving me advice. So one day, I, I look up to him kasi. So one day, baka maging ganun din ako. Sana, sana maging ganun. No? That, that my, my, my mentees would still, uh, would still uh, ask for advice from me and then I will give them advice. Uh, thank you for your time, for your kind attention. I hope you learned something from this uh, presentation. Maraming salamat po. Thank you po, Sir Marish. Um, yeah, so, um, Sir Marish, um, Question lang po, could you still stay for the Q&A if ever na ano, tapusin mo natin yung talks and then sabay-sabay na lang po yung Q&A later? Okay lang po ba? Or do you yeah, have to Yes. Soon? Yes, okay, it's okay. okay. Thank you po, sir. Ayan po. So, um, if we have questions, pa lagay na lang po sa chat box. We'll just uh, read them later. And then, um, ayan, so... Ayan, thank you again, sir. We really learned a lot from you. Dabi ko na notes, actually. And it is very, ano to, ang na, na um, paulit-ulit na rin ito kay sir, eh, kahit na uh, nakapag-research ka na, you're always still a mentee. And um, the focus is on trying to learn more as we go through the research process and also maximize daw yung research. Parang ang daming na-open up the doors, ano po, na pagka nag-research ka, you're not just doing it because you're researching, but, you know, and not only also because we want to get tenure, di ba, yung ano natin eh, is sa mga um, targets natin. Pero yung sinabi niya na, you, you never know that, ano pala, meron ko palang, produce na something good na pwede yung papatin. So, meron pa pala tayong ibang pwede doors na open na, no? So, let's just not limit ourselves. Ayan. Thank you po again, sir, for that very inspiring message and advice to us. Especially yung mga younger faculty sa atin na um, interested in, na mag-research pero we don't know the first thing to ano, do to go about it. Ayan. Thank you ulit, sir. Ayan. Uh, moving on po to our second speaker. He is a professor 12 at the Department of <clears throat> Chemical Engineering, SEAT, and a UP scientist one under the UP scientific career system. He obtained his PhD research in environmental science and management from UPLB and his master's in chemical engineering from UP Diliman and his BS chemical engineering where he graduated cum laude from the University of San Agustin, Iloilo City. He is a multi-awarded chemical engineer who received the following awards, 2022 Philippine Federation of Professional Associations National Excellence Award in Academic Research and Development, 2021 UP Alumni Engineers National Achievement Award in Engineering Research and Development, 2018 Outstanding UPLB Alumnus for Research Management and Administration, 2015 Manila Water Foundation Prize for Engineering Excellence in 2014, UP Outstanding Senior Research Researcher in National Sciences. In 2013, Professional Regulations Commission Outstanding Professional of the Year. And in 2011, UPLB Outstanding Teachers Award in Physical Sciences. He served as the National President of the Philippine Institute of Chemical Engineers, or PICHE, from 2004 to 2005 
and is currently the chair of two interdisciplinary centers in UPLB, including the UPLB Interdisciplinary Biofuels Research Study Center and the UPLB Interdisciplinary Life Cycle Assessment Laboratory. He has engaged in numerous externally and internally funded research projects and consultancies focusing on biofuels and life cycle assessment, among others. He also has published more than 60 refereed and over 100 non-referred journal articles in several book chapters and policy papers on ethanol and biodiesel production in the Philippines. Ulis, we are very privileged to have with us today the former UPLB Vice Chancellor for Research and Extension for two terms from 2014 to 2020, Dr. Rex Guidenafelis. Good morning, sir. May we have a virtual applause pa from everyone. Thank you, Annie, for the kind introduction. I'll attempt to share my screen. Pag hindi, I requested Anjali, let me see. Okay, sana. Okay. A slideshow na ba? Yes, sir, we can already see your screen. Thank you, Bob. Okay. So, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, it's an honor. And uh, thank you, Maris, Vice Maris. Ganda ng presentation mo. Uh, Tama-tama sa aking uh, presentation then. You're looking inside, no? We, we got a lot of uh, tips and uh, learnings from Vice Maris where he uh, uh, presented the inside story of going into projects and mentoring. So I, I'll be looking from the outside. Tama-tama. Hindi kami nag-usap, but... Uh, I hopefully uh, I'll be able to inspire uh, our junior faculty. Uh, Japanese train. So I also, when I went back from Japan, although I didn't finish my degree, I uh, also adopted the Gohai Senpai uh, relationship in developing my laboratory. So we uh, have similarities, and hopefully I'll be able to compliment yung presentation of Vice Maris, which are very informative, very detailed. No? So um, for, for the um, committee, I, I saw that uh, it's, uh, there's an objective of helping the junior faculty. Uh, I, I assume that uh, we're looking at the uh, uh, tenureship or permanency of the uh, junior uh, faculty. Uh, of course, when you say permanent ship, ang unang papasok sa isip mo ay, uh, or tenure ay publication, which we are required. No? Uh, alam nyo naman, sa UP, you're given uh, five years to have your MS. Pwede ma-extend for maximum of two years kung nasa thesis stage ka. When you have your MS, you'll be given uh, uh, a rank, although it's not automatic, nagiging uh, uh, ordinary na lang sa pagbigay ng assistant professor. And once you're an assistant professor, you'll be given three years to publish and get your tenure. So I always equate, no? or the first thing that comes into my mind when you say tenure, it's publication. So I'll be sharing to you some of the efforts of uh, the um, Interdisciplinary Biofuel Research Study Center and uh, UPLB, Interdisciplinary Life Cycle Assessment Laboratory, the people behind. And... Um, what transpired no, sa, so far up to this point in time. And one thing that I have learned, uh, uh, the proportionality is not equal. When you say if, if a staff publish one paper in a year, three staff could publish more than three papers in a year, no, looking at the papers, uh, aside from the projects that could be generated. So let me uh, allow me to have this outline for my presentation how I started in research. Um, well, uh, when I was an assistant professor, parang ordinary na teacher lang. More on focusing on teaching, happy ka na. But there came a time that I have to decide, probably by, uh, by an appointment that I could not reject and cannot uh, do away. Then let me share to you 
the potential areas of research for both interdisciplinary, I just call it biofuels, and ILCAL or, uh, or LCA, you know, laboratory. Then research program, road mapping, and proposal making. Ito yung sinasabi kanina, maybe related sa sinasabi ni Dean Rose on the guidelines. No? I'll, when we started our biofuels program way back in 2006, it made sure that we have research program and we made a road map up to the point that uh, we do feasibility study and policy uh, recommendation or uh, initiatives. Then uh, I'll breeze through the biofuels and LCA researches at the department. Uh, lang natin. Then the second part of my presentation will be the stages of mentorship that I adopted. Basically, uh, the general guideline here was patterned from a Japanese experience where I created the senior, junior, like the, the three, you know, uh, authority, three authority na pinakita ni Vice Chancellor Maris last sa presentation niya. Then uh, I'll go into mentoring for establishing a career in UPLB and uh, binaliktad ko lang ito. I, I think uh, it should have been muna yung general research mentorship at ILCAL and uh, um, biofuels. Okay, so um, um, it's 9.38. I have 30 minutes. <laughs> How I started my research journey. It was way back in, in 2006. When um, UPLB anticipated the enactment of biofuels law, which was uh, nangyari in January 2007. So it was then Chancellor Ray Velasco was the head of the Chancellor of UPLB. And he created nine niches and themes. And one of which is UPLB Alternative Energy Committee. The other one that survived is the climate change. The rest, hindi natuloy. So I... I uh, Chancellor Velasco called for an interdisciplinary team uh, and we were uh, put in one room and uh, he asked the whole team to decide who would chair and uh, doctor uh, from the IPB, forget the name. Uh, well, the most senior in the room pointed to me and he said, Rex, you lead. <laughs> I was an assistant professor, I think, for I was too young. I, I, I'm not a graduate of UPLB. I, know, I don't know the people, the dynamics. Well, that time probably I have already taught uh, mahaba -haba na rin, no, sa UPLB. But then I was not confident in knowing the whole campus and knowing all the people. But uh, being from uh, said by the senior and confirmed by the chancellor, I had the UPLB Alternative Energy Committee in 2006. Then um, in 2004, Chancellor Rex Cruz thought of creating interdisciplinary study centers. And one of the uh, centers that was created is the UPLB Interdisciplinary Biofuels Research Study Center, focusing on the strength of UPLB uh, to the uh, areas, the bio, bio system. That means we have the agriculture, the forestry, and the rest of the uh, cluster, and the engineering and the College of Arts and Sciences. So, we thought that I think we will have a good competitive edge that could contribute to the national development if we focus on biofuels. And again, I, I was appointed. Um, I think it all started March 4, 2014. And uh, I was appointed to chair uh, until now. Uh, this is uh, hosted by the Department of Chemical Engineering since then. And in 2017, um, the UPLB Interdisciplinary Life Cycle Assessment Laboratory was established October 20, 2017. It was because the biofuels or uh, bioethanol and biodiesel production was questioned on its sustainability. So uh, we thought of uh, coming up with a center that would start with assessing the sustain environmental, socioeconomic sustainability of biofuels and later on would expand to uh, other crops and other man manufacturing processes, but we uh, pivoted on biofuels in conducting life cycle assessment to prove and to show the sustainability uh, of uh, the production system. So uh, I still, still uh, I chair the um, ILCAL, we call it ILCAL, no? for short, ngayon, we just call it biofuels and LCA. 
So uh, let me start with this. Uh, I believe that uh, mentorship offers mutual benefits to the mentor and mentees, at least in career development. The least is career development. Of course, we have seen a lot of, of benefits, just like Sinabi ni Vice Mary. So you will feel so glad, contented when you have contributed. Now, uh, and the biofuels research natin is towards the end na. Uh, for traditional bioethanol biodiesel production. So, so ibig sabihin, the R&D program is on the policy. Uh, there are some remnants of feasibility studies that has to be updated and probably new ones with a new raw material feedstock. But basically, we are on the end, in, which is on policy development. And uh, we always make sure that our policy recommendation is science-based or technology-based. And it also, it covers not only the technical, but also the socioeconomic. That's why perfectly the Interdisciplinary Life Cycle Assessment Laboratory fits in when we do policy recommendation and policy writing and development. So um, again, there are a lot of things that um, both mentors and mentees no, uh, derive uh, from uh, a partnership in conducting uh, uh, projects which I will show later. So let me um, start with the potential areas of research, just focusing on biofuels and LCA. And I will touch two industries that we have just uh, in, uh, engaged where we were commissioned to do uh, some studies. Okay, it, it was the year Public Act 9367 of Biofuels Act 2006, although it was enacted into law in January 12, 2007. This is the first country that uh, legislate or have a mandatory blending requirement for all gasoline and petroleum sold in the country. So it's mandatory. And uh, Chancellor Velasco thought that uh, we, we have to move ahead of the enactment of the law. So it, the uh, alternative energy was uh, committee was created. And we crafted uh, a lot of projects, programs, projects, and studies to address the uh, newly emerging industry in the country. And that's where we uh, came in because uh, during the national crafting of a road mapping of R&D program, uh, UPLB was already prepared. And basically we got the lion's share of the uh, proposal that come, came after. Uh, the second one is on the sustainability. We know that uh, there are three pillars of sustainability, the social, the economic, and the environmental. It's, um, it's always the end point that, uh, of any research to prove its sustainability on both, uh, in, in three areas, the social, economic, and environmental. And normally when you do um, life cycle assessment, we do it from cradle to grave approach. You know? And um, it's a technique to assess environmental, social, economic impacts associated with all stages of products life. And uh, it could also be used for decision support tool for a project or system, you know, process or management infrastructure to specifically address the need of selecting and optimizing available solution. So it could be a solution, it could be comparison. Basically, uh, when you do decision making, you have a basis. And we, we, we've got a lot of, uh, of uh, LCA projects because now the, the cry is prove the sustainability of any endeavor, especially on uh, production system. So um, we, we um, advocate uh, life cycle thinking, uh, the life cycle thinking from a linear to circular economy. And um, from the traditional uh, extraction, design, production, packaging, uh, use and disposal to landfill, we would like to close the loop. We try to recover, we uh, reuse and recycle. So there are at least uh, one, two, three, for four industries that we've been engaged in uh, doing some um, uh, circular economy approach, though the whole theme is more on uh, sustainability. So um, research program uh, road mapping, again, uh, as uh, the Dean said, uh, there should be a guideline. I make sure that we do road mapping from the very start of any endeavor, both for biofuels and life cycle assessment. Uh, in this way, the, the staff um, and the um, support staff would, would know what is the direction and they could think of and could possibly contribute no, in the development of uh, 
the programs, the projects, or the studies. And um, they could look forward in the roadmap that there is uh, there are more things to do and they could develop their careers once they have internalized and digested the whole uh, road mapping uh, program. So uh, in, in uh, biofields, for example, we start to do the feedstock development. We uh, closely work with the Department of Agriculture and uh, Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Agricultural Research, as well as PCA and SRA. Then we went into innovative and cost-effective conversion technologies, looking at uh, possible um, technologies. And uh, we, we do a lot of, of course, um, uh, surveillance and assessment, technology assessment. If it is feasible and possible to bring them to the Philippines, then we look at the value adding and byproduct in the waste utilization, the concept of biorefinery. And the last one is the pre-commercial and commercial states. In, in UP or uh, most of the um, universities uh, do not touch the commercial stage, no? except probably in facilitating the commercialization. But we were given the opportunity to do pre-commercial research. And I'll show you uh, later on this, uh, in our engagement with DA Bar on the development, 10-year development of sweet sorghum uh, as, the, as a viable bioethanol feedstock. So for LCA naman, uh, we do also um, a road mapping. When we started in 2007, October 20, uh, we thought of LCA training and capacity building kaagad. No? Um, it, it was the question, again, of the sustainability of biofuels that uh, uh, pushed us to establish ILCAO. Um, in fact, my PhD dissertation is sustainability of uh, biofuels production. Uh, that would, uh, of course, start the uh, rolling of the establishment of ILCAL. Then in, for 2018-2020, we programmed that we'll develop Excel-based GHG accounting toolkit. We have done uh, a number of these, including the latest for the UPLB Low Carbon Net Zero uh, Initiative. We have the calculator toolkit for GHG accounting. And um, uh, we have also came up with the local or Philippine GHG emission factors na hindi na tayo magde-depends international uh, and other countries' emission. We did also a water footprint. So medyo maganda yung ating um, uh, track record dito. We've done already tax, carbon tax, which is a new initiative of the government. We've done this, I think, in 2015 or 16. Now, in 2021 to 2023, these are the things that we would be working and so on and so forth. So the member of the team um, uh, would see if they would like to go into this career on the um, sustainability, working on life cycle assessment as a tool or technique. So when we do road mapping, just like uh, sa biofuels, ito ay ilkal, uh, we have short term, long term, and uh, medium term. And um, nilagay namin ko anong target na agency, funding agency, you know? And anong mga units would be working? As you have seen, the bio, both, both biofuels and um, ILCAL are all interdisciplinary. We have always this team. No? And we learn a lot from experts, from subject expert or topic expert from other units. So common is to um, uh, indicate anong target na funding agency as well as the units that will be involved for the short, medium term, and long term. So um, if last ko lang, recent biofuels and LCA researchers at the, in the department, um, itong pinaka-recent just before the pandemic, um, we have the uh, socioeconomic and environmental impact of sugar production in the Philippines. Uh, ito ay parallel, this work commission research uh, funded by SRA, Sugar Regulatory Administration, the uh, socioeconomic and environmental impact of bioethanol production. When you look at the uh, title, it looks like it, hindi engineering, you know? Uh, Gaya yung sinabi ni Vice Maris, ano, uh, doon mo makikita sa loob. For example, when you do environmental impact, uh, you're, okay, let, let's focus on the uh, GHG emission or carbon footprint. Hindi ka makapag-compute ng carbon footprint if hindi ka magkakandak ng material balance and energy balances. And you cannot start the material and energy balances kung hindi mo pa na kompleto or na-finalize ang process design. And all of this process design material energy but it has to be validated 
from the data collected. Again, the data collection is very challenging work, okay? So we have also uh, one work on ethanol in the Philippines injecting octane into by economy funded by US Grains Incorporated. The life cycle assessment in terms of carbon debt, payback period, carbon savings energetic study for the biodiesel production funded with the DOE, carbon footprint and JG reduction, uh, potential biodiesel from Cameras International. This is a private company. Uh, and then we have the establishment of Sweet Sorghum. It's a feasibility study from funded by uh, UP, Philippine Energy Research and Policy Institute. Then uh, uh, boosting farmer income to integrated soybean production uh, funded by BAR and um, itong pinakalas na tapos this year, the enhanced rice biogas production fund funded by Innovate UK. So you see, halo-halo um, na yung funding agency. And um, ang hindi ko lang naisama dito sa presentation na ito kung saan nakukuha ang mga funding. But the strategy I'll be presenting later on. At least you have the glimpse of the funding agencies na pinatap namin. And of course, pinaplano mo, dahil yung ginagawa ni na Vice Maris, pinaplano mo kung ano, anong nasa roadmap mo, anong project yan, at saka anong agency. So, uh, and then uh, the rest ay uh, medyo chika-chika ka na, no? officially and personally, to get the funding. And ito na yung ongoing namin ngayon. Um, the Innovate UK uh, gave us uh, another project as part of the program. The Rice Store Biogas Hub, this is for three years, just started this September. And we were commissioned again. Masuki na ito. They're happy probably with, with our outputs. So pabalik balik sila. US Grains again commissioned us to do a greenhouse gas reduction assessment of Vietnam and Indonesia. And uh, now we were informed uh, three, two weeks ago that the one of our proposals I go na nadaana ng pandemic this is diversification of feed stock for bioethanol sector in the Philippines funded by SRA may may pera na daw na release ang DBM so we we just submitted last week the revised proposal we're just waiting for the MOA and notice to proceed so let me show to you mga ay ito pala may dalawa pa no this is a new one and we uh, we've been working with especially with the department of mechanical engineering uh, uh, potential needs, no? Medyo tinatansya ko pa ito. Uh, we started with the uh, fuel marking uh, project with them. But of course, pag nakapasok na yung isang paa, we try to ipasok din yung pangalawang paa mo. And I'm looking at uh, uh, areas such as process optimization here where we use our softwares as well as uh, fluid dynamics modeling. And I think uh, we have a good team within Sayat that uh, uh, Petron no, in 2001 commissioned us to do the fuel marking process assessment for their manual system. When we were asked by Petron to present our result to the whole uh, petroleum industry, Chevron called us <laughs> and also commissioned us to do for them. Now Petron in 2022 commissioned us again because uh, Mayroon na silang automatic injection system. So medyo may suki-suki gaya ng sinabi ni Vice Maris sa mga journals and conferences. May mga suki-suki once your client na, ay uh, tuwang-tuwa. So the interdisciplinary team is very important. Walang ano ngayon, walang solo, walang exclusivity. You need really the expertise of other fields to, to be able to deliver a good one. No? And of course, before you can deliver, ah, kailangan naintindihan nyo sa team. Um, ano objectives, anong gagawin and ano ang dapat uh, magiging recommendation with respect to so many aspects. No? So another one we just completed is the environmental impact of cement uh, production through life cycle assessment. Uh, we're looking also here um, um, uh, potential as a potential needs like uh, process optimization or um, uh, waste utilization in the system. So uh, these are the two new engagements that, uh, of course, uh, titingnan natin if makapasok tayo. The other one, of course, uh, has been sugar. Uh, we've been involved in sugar industry for a long time. And uh, uh, tinatansya din natin if uh, there's a uh, strong uh, uh, push for the sugar industry to uh, need us no? to, to help them in terms of establishing our sugar center here. 
From time to time, nagpipitch tayo. Parang hindi pa natin na-fulfill yan. Uh, an, an strong indication. So uh, ito yon just breeze through the uh, uh, biofuels research uh, conducted by the department. Again, ito ay interdisciplinary. Hindi ko na sinama yung mga projects uh, um, that were conducted by other units uh, in the university. Uh, ito ay conducted lang dito sa Department of Chemical Engineering. Uh, hindi ko rin ito na-update uh, between the last date nito at saka yung recent na pinakita ko. <laughs> Kinapos na ng oras. But um, very encouraging that you'll be given the opportunity, of course, to uh, work on certain government programs and uh, helping them in crafting the next R&D and uh, policy direction of the, uh, of the respective agencies. So um, ito yung ating mga projects. Um, I think the last count we have, the biofuels has already uh, conducted uh, projects amounting to 350 million. So uh, in the land update, but um, we, we have a lot actually because of the uh, uh, industry that is new, no? emerging. So dami silang kailangan. Um, and uh, we were able to deliver. Uh, funded by the different agencies in the country, but also outside the country. No? Silang binigay sa atin. I think um, the feasibility studies that we did, we did a lot of it. Although we're working now for a, an update thing, uh, based on uh, last week's discussion sa bar, we update namin some of the feasibility study that were conducted because uh, of the uh, high price of fuel and the increase, the increase of the price, the increase of the price of the LB, um, discussion, briefing on the uh, status and potential of biofuels, in, including petrochemical companies. No? So, uh, so uh, where do we get our research ideas? Ito yung mga kailangan natin bantayan. Ano? Again, hindi ko lang lagay dito kung saan mga pera, but research ideas from stakeholders, different stakeholders through different channels. No? One of which are conference, but common is we talk to companies. We talk to um, uh, industry associations to look at their problems and share to them what we can do. And to talk to um, funding agencies, especially the, regulation, the regulatory agencies, kung anong need, anong research gap, ano ang policy gaps and policy um, development that they wanted us to study. The other source of new ideas or research ideas ay itong uh, conclusion from previous studies. Normally, we have recommendation and from there, we push Nanganak, nangapo, yan, no? Nagkaroon ng series because at the end of the um, uh, project, you make um, recommendations and um, out of the conclusions. And from there, you use that as a basis to propose. And when the funding agency believe on your work, they would really continue the work was as we have experienced. The uh, uh, third major one is research trends and innovation. We look at the research trend and the trends and innovation, just like when we have seen that the sustainability aspect of biofuels was questioned. So we work on life cycle assessment, but uh, we do a lot of um, technology assessment and uh, technology surveillance. Plus, through Kolanga, no? we, we, we travel a lot, uh, funded by government. To, to work on and visit the different universities, research institutes in um, different countries to look what's in and what's new, what's the uh, innovation, what uh, possible research agenda pwede dalit sa Pilipinas. And uh, once you get funding agency from a government agency, normally nagpapadala din sila ng tao. And doon pa lang, nag-uusap na kayo ng tao nila kung anong sunod na project program na pagbalik sa Pilipinas, you propose and they support it. No? That's one of the techniques ang ginagamit ko. Um, basically, nag-generate ang uh, new idea for technology surveillance as well as gumagawa kami ng global network networking. And in fact, in one of our visits, ito, ito, ito. Uh, University of 20, dito yung headquarters ng Global Water Network where UPLB is the only uh, uh, agency uh, member of this global water network because we do water footprint. Uh, we just completed the water footprint for seven industrial crops no? uh, like um, sugarcane, uh, coconut, uh, 
what else? Coffee, cacao, rubber, banana, pineapple. So we link to them and we learn from them. No, uh, they provided us material and we signed an MOU. Uh, also, then sa Agrinium, I think they gave they gave us also scholarship data. Uh, what else? Where else? We, we did a lot of traveling. No? Like, for example, the pioneering work on carbon tax. We did this, and Quebec was, has the best all over the world no? in terms of carbon tax policy implementation. So um, we learned from them. We adopt what could be adopted as a research agenda. Ang kailangan dito kasi sa, ano eh, you, you should have a good idea for your proposal. No? Uh, and uh, fortunately, ang biofuels ay uh, um, agriculture based. Pag sinabi agriculture based, well, uh, much of the cost of the biofuels ay nasa feedstock or raw material. Probably at least 70% or more than 70%. So that's why we have to develop the whole spectrum no? uh, from the uh, feedstock development, plantation, nursery, etc., with the College of Agriculture. And we handle the uh, processing for the whole project um, coverage. So we have to study what's in and what's out, both on the agricultural and um, uh, processing, and lately, of course, on the sustainability. So um, let me go into my second uh, uh, part of my um, presentation, stages of mentorship that I, um, well, I have adopted here in uh, ILCAL and um, biofuels. These are the stages for general mentorship. No normally, this is for the research assistant. Ito yung ang ating mga URA, uh, senior research specialist. Ito yung mga non-tenured. Ano? Uh, this general mentorship normally about two years. And um, ito naman ay hindi distinct itong four stages. Na. May, may, may mga blurred overlapping dyan. But basically, um, it has been my policy that uh, after two years, once you have completed this uh, general mentorship program, uh, you, you are now industry ready. And uh, if you want to stay, uh, you should start your graduate program, start your master's. That was before. But ngayon, ano na eh, pag pumapasok, mamaya, magpapaalam na. Sir, gusto ko na mag-aral, ano? mag-MS. So kung minsan na uh, first engagement pa lang, mag-aaral. So saglit lang, mag-adjust mo na and see how your involvement with the project or projects and uh, calculate kung kaya. So ngayon, wala ka ng problema ano? in terms of uh, paaralin ng uh, masters if they want to stay further to look at the potential UPLD career or for the advanced graduate program nila. Oh, program. This is program. Sorry. So um, the as a start ng isang research assistant, may, normally we start with Jura 2. No? We don't start with Jura 1. We assign them to a specific project or projects. Because sometimes meron tayong project na non-funded, like itong ating uh, UPLD low carbon and net zero initiative. Uh, walang funding yan. So nagmo-multitasking yung ibang RA to help the um, the uh, program na walang funding uh, that is for the university. Um, second uh, after na assign unti-unti nag nag nagtumataas yung kanyang uh, responsibility. Uh, aside from handling specific project ngayon ay uh, uh, kasama na yung financials. So matututo na siya ngayon, no? Uh, sa pag-handle ng financials. Um, then, uh, ito na. Once uh, na-experience na in handling a specific project and the financials, uh, ready na siya gumawa ng uh, writing proposals no? and writing project reports. Uh, normally, once naka-handle ng specific project, alam niya yung nitty-gritty and um, alam niya yung uh, specific na isang project. So, um, equip siya to write a uh, project report. And once you have experience, madali na gumawa ng proposal, having a new idea, pinapadevelop namin yung uh, isang project or uh, program proposal. Then uh, this one is now leading uh, project uh, teams or um, uh, a team. So again, this is about uh, two years, um, about two years lang. And uh, we... Uh, release or uh, they, they could uh, leave the team because from the very start, normally I ask for commitment kung hanggang kailan mag-stay, 
because of course mahirap pag nagpalit-palit ng tao no uh, hirap ng uh, paghandle ng uh, uh, projects na walang tao and then palitan mo ng bago it train mo naman expose mo uh, lahat lahat so uh, at least the commitment is to finish the project that he or she had started and probably could go beyond okay the second one is establishing UPLB career and uh, or ad, an advanced graduate program. Dapat end ito, no? hindi na, na, na ng oras. Um, ito naman ay yung mga ating, for example, um, medyo nag-advanced na research assistant, like for example, yung ating uh, uh, UR1 or UR2, no, project-based or um, senior research specialist too. Uh, and of course, yung mga ating um, UPLB tenured or sabi natin, item, no? ng mga university researcher. If they want to establish a uh, UPLB career uh, or um, uh, target for advanced graduate program for our project base. So uh, by the time na sila ay um, tapos na sa general mentorship, uh, most often we let them present, no? represent our team with uh, agencies and institutions. Ang common starting point dito, magpapresent sila ng report, project report, although most often ako ang nag-present ng project report, uh, sa terminal report. By mga progress report, I uh, provide them the opportunity to present. Uh, presenting conferences and uh, workshop, ito na yung chance nila. Because if they have done leading the, the project, know the nitty-gritty, they, uh, they would know no? uh, the things, the, in, the, um, the, the basic things in the, the project for reporting. Then, uh, ito na, gagawa na ng develop ng research programs. The programs are um, uh, sometimes uh, um, successful, sometimes hindi, ganun talagang buhay. But uh, developing the research programs would have two benefit. Pag pumasa, then push. Pag hindi, tago muna. Just in case mayroong call for a related topic, may pull out ka, ready for engagement. And normally, na-notice natin sa university ang bilis, no? Bilis ng deadline. So we make sure that we have ideas. We make sure that uh, we have uh, mga backup. Ano? So tiyatago lang. Then this one, developing uh, uh, courses, especially for those who are wanted to establish a UPLB career. They could be a um, researcher or aspiring to be faculty. So I um, ask them to jointly develop courses. Uh, next stage uh, is to co-teach um, undergrad and graduate uh, courses. Uh, this refers to the environmental science and leading uh, training programs and conferences, organizing them. And uh, the last phase is co-advising for undergrad and graduate students. And when they see the potential of a faculty for career advancement, then they would apply for faculty items. If not, if they're happy as a researcher, still they would see the potential of students as um, contributory for um, research programs, uh, publication, and of course, uh, uh, contribution to national development in solving some problems and uh, developing policy recommendations. So I would start, balik ta rin ko lang, ano? ihuli kong general mentorship. Um, unahin ko establishing UPLB career and advanced graduate program para lang uh, ma, medyo mahababang isa eh. Ito yung unahin ko. Uh, I-flash ko lang, hindi kailangan detail. I think I'm very fortunate na napaka-detail ng discussion ni Vice Chancellor Maris uh, looking at the inside. Ito naman sa akin uh, from the outside. And uh, hopefully you, hope you can learn from these two presentations. Of course, pamaya kay Doc Vic. You know? So mentorship. Um, establishing UPLB career and advanced graduate program. Ito yung sinasabi ko last kanina na once you get into this, hindi naman siya sharp, uh, may sharp demarcation. I normally present the, the, the output, but we provide them opportunities no, to present the result. Uh, gaya natin, uh, uh, nung nagsimula, nanginginig ang katawan, kamay, hindi mo alam na maintindihan, they have to experience that. No? And unti-unti, uh, nag-rebuild ng confidence. And uh, we, we, um, I design programs and um, for them all to uh, present the results of the study from the different stakeholders in conferences, workshops, and symposium. Also, 
Um, the second there is the researchers developed through mentees. Uh, sila mismo nag uh, out of the projects na handle na may nagapag-isip through the conclusions, uh, recommendation, and new ideas through the readings and through observations sa industry na binibisita namin, plant visit and discussion with the uh, uh, different stakeholders. They they came up with uh, programs and projects that could help the industry. For example, improve sugar recovery, um, uh, factory heat network optimization, distillation column simulation optimization, uh, water footprint, life cycle assessment of the different industries. Of course, the bioethanol, biodiesel, sugar, cement. And nangyari yan. Ano? For example, itong um, uh, ginawa natin sa isang distillery where they retrofitted. We tried to optimize the uh, distillation to started with simulation and uh, applied to uh, the distilling column of one of the ethanol distilleries and um, showing the uh, great benefit out of this uh, uh, simulation. And another one is for this uh, sugar industry in terms of increasing the uh, sugar recovery. So yun ang nangyari, no? nanganak, nanganak. And in developing new programs, uh, sorry, in uh, developing, not only developing new projects, but also they helped me developing new programs. Like for example, when we started uh, looking at the establishment of ILCAL, or Interdisciplinary Life Cycle Assessment, we, we uh, con consulted many industries, uh, sorry, man many institutions, advanced institutions um, in the US, Canada, and Europe. So uh, ito, for example, the Economic Policy Institute at the uh, Chicago, of Chicago, sorry, Institute. Uh, we discuss about uh, carbon uh, tax data. And Argon Laboratory, uh, uh, Dr. Michael Young is at Argon Laboratory. Siya ang start ng life cycle assessment in 1994 with, with his uh, PhD dissertation. So we went there and discussed with him because there are things hindi namin maintindihan. And uh, after discussing with him, uh, we thought of, uh, that was 2016, we thought of establishing uh, uh, ILCAL in the university. Ito naman, University of 20, uh, we, before we engaged with Water Footprint, we um, went there, discussed with Hoekstra, the, the famous uh, scientist on Water Footprint. So, uh, mad madami pa tayong pinupunta, pinupuntahan, like uh, si Lisa and si Elaine, we went to Brazil for our biodiesel from soybean. Um, next is stage ng ating um, mentoring is developing courses and co-teaching. So uh, we developed the uh, internship program last year uh, for the um, online and uh, this mid-year, uh, mid uh, the face-to-face -face internship. And good that we have partners with the biofuel industry that took us uh, fast. No? And we also, we were allowed to... Um, offer a special topic on sustainable systems engineering. This for the second year. And uh, si Engineer Magadia and Jim Batangihan, who are university researcher and also affiliate associate professor at this very young age, are my partners in developing these courses. So uh, yun, uh, we conducted a lot of uh, trainings. So makita niya dito sa baba. Uh, of course, we started with UPLB constituent, the whole bio... Uh, fuel industry, the Sugar Regulator Administration, Department of Agriculture, Climate Change uh, Program, students, UPLB, uh, pati na yung state colleges and uh, universities. So um, we, we've been uh, doing a lot in terms of uh, inculcating life cycle thinking so that uh, there will be more people working on the sustainability. So ganun din mga trainings ito. Uh, we, they are also involved in organizing like a business summit, uh, workshop, no? and uh, some uh, business discussion conferences with uh, different agencies and uh, organizations. Then uh, they, they present in the uh, National Science Technology Week, uh, presenting our research on bio-oil. Si Lisa ito at saka si Pristel. Uh, they um, were the main people who organized uh, the first international biomass conference that we organized uh, on the biomass. So, ma madami nang uh, ginagawa uh, bago sila makagraduate. No? But this would build confidence on them on how to handle projects, on how to do linkage, 
uh, on how to uh, project, of course, the kakayanan uh, ng UPLB biofuels in Ilkal. So uh, we sent also people for uh, cooperate. Another one will be coming. Um, sa co-advising naman, uh, we believe no, that the students have brilliant ideas that can be developed. Ngayon, sina, for example, si Elaine and Bea uh, started on um, co-advising BS and uh, hopefully by next time, my co-advising on the um, MS students. Uh, we believe that they have brilliant ideas. Ang ganda ng ano, eh, discussion with them. No? Although you direct them, but they have also their readings and as well as ideas. So you capitalize on that on further developing no? or probably uh, coming into going into new research agenda. So the general research mentorship, ito na yung uh, ating mga research assistant uh, na nadaanan yung upcut na stages. And Several, ito yung ginagawa natin, no? several research assistants through the years, um, ito yung uh, madadaanan lang to, to build their confidence and enriching their experience and skill. Crafting, writing, research proposal. No? So they start with the objective, work plan, budget, personnel requirement. So uh, ginagaydan natin sila. And uh, normally they look at the old proposal and fit in with the new idea. And uh, for the project implementation, which is the last phase of their uh, training program, ito na yan, they should be conscious of the timeline of the project with respect to private uh, project period. The meeting that has been conducted, the procurement problem, ito yung pinakabigest, and of course, the leadership of the project. And the interdisciplinary nature of the projects that we handle, they're learning a lot from different experts and from the different stakeholders. Pati ako, I'm learning also from our partner experts and stakeholders. So after that, ang next stage nila, ito ng pinakamahay hirap, the, the research method and data gathering. From the laboratory to pilot, then you do plantation trials. Gaya sinabi ko, kasi agriculture-based ito, biofuels, you start from the plantation or nursery plantation. We do plantation and validation trials. Um, and then we collaborate for commercialization with uh, sugar uh, with um, sugar and ethanol uh, companies like it uh, option this is a 500 ton per day sugar meal where we um, um, meal our sweet sorghum this a 30 hectare no itong sinabi ko na pre commercial nasanay tayo even yung ating mga colleagues sa CA na karon ng 1 2 3 hectares but this is a 30 hectare um, pre commercial size which we were engaged and we milled this to this uh, 50, 500 tons per day in a sugar mill in Negros. And uh, the syrup that was produced was um, uh, handled by um, San Carlos Bioenergy, the second bioethanol plant in the country, having a 125,000 liters per day capacity. So we, we do a lot of uh, working. No? And the, the, um, the uh, mentees learn a lot yeah, hindi lang on uh, peripheral things like sa plantation side, but also on the processes as well as linkages and talking to people, talking to the uh, different stakeholders of the industry. Also, we work with the ethanol, especially ito yung uh, nagiging um, malaking project natin. Uh -huh. Then uh, research methods uh, also includes uh, uh, data gathering through surveys and focus group discussion key informant interviews. Um, then the next is, of course, the data analysis, assessment of the studies, report writing. Ito na yung masaya. Kung minsan na-realize na mo na kulang ka pala sa data. No? Uh, may mayroong data gap. So it has to be well planned. Then, of course, the results are uh, publication. Uh, we have a number of publications. We have also Water Footprint Calculator Toolkit, Carbon Footprint Calculator, and we have a newly uh, uh, designed one for the campus university setting. We launch our books, our launch our policy papers. We uh, produce books. We uh, write uh, wrote uh, book chapters. We contributed to journals. We having special issues. Ita uh, special issues purposely for biofuels and life cycle assessment. There's one under one coming this coming January. Of course, another policy paper or uh, two policy papers. Uh, these are the regular journal, yung mga suke, eh, no? uh, some of them or most of them. 
And uh, itong 2022, ka, kapapablis lang ng comparative analysis biofuels production from the different potential feedstock in the Philippines. Uh, ito si uh, Rona ang lead. And last year, si Crystal naman nakapagpublish nitong uh, book chapter for the bioethanol production in the Philippines. So, uh, well, uh, we have some outstanding NAS uh, paper, 2015, 2021, uh, because of the team. And um, sa UPLB, say at uh, in 2019, uh, the Biofields Laboratory was cited as a set outstanding research team. And this year, the Life Cycle Assessment Laboratory cited as set outstanding research team. And you know, without this mentees, with, without the team, uh, limited la ang magagawa natin. But with them, a lot of things that could be done, could be published, could be uh, accomplished. Again, hindi ito proportionality. If one could produce one paper per year, yung tatlong uh, staff could produce three lang, no. It's uh, great to multiply having people in the team. And uh, I have proven that in this team. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, 30 minutes back out, 38. <laughs> thank you. Thank you po, sir. Sakto naman po kayo sa time. <laughs> Ay, good, 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 good. Night timer ako. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so thank you for that wonderful presentation, Dr. Um, Dimofelis. And also thank you for accepting our invitation dito po sa ating uh, research mentoring webinar. So let me highlight a few information na na-mention po ni Sir. So you, firstly po, the mutual benefits of, uh, for the mentor and mentees. Uh, Pinaka mahalaga po, I think, is your career development ng mga mentees na dapat instill ng mga mentors. And uh, Dr. Dimofelis also uh, was able to create or define yung roadmap ng project making. And uh, yung, mga, yung importance na masatisfy our funding agency para po uh, they will again request for our service. And this can provide yung continuous collaboration and continuous um, creation ng uh, project natin. And also, we have to be open with the idea Do, noong ating mga mentees, noong mga students, kasi most of the time, nga po na-mention ni Sir, they have brilliant ideas. And I also agree with uh, how they created, kagaya rin po kay Dr. Madlang Bayan, kung paano po yung naging flow ng mentoring uh, dun sa mga mentees. Kasi I think parehas po sila na uh, nagkaroon ng experience with Japanese mentors. So very important po sa kanila yung mentoring talaga. And of course, yung napakalaking um, project po nila, Sir Dimofelis, yung sa Ilkal and din po sa mga biofuels. So thank you for that, Sir. Um, for the question and answer, sana po makapag-stay po kayo ng hanggang mga 11.30 para po sa Q&A and awarding ng certificates. I'll stay, I'll stay. Thank you, Sir. Okay, so uh, let me introduce our uh, third and last um, speaker for this webinar. Yeah. And so for our third um, speaker, uh, he is a professor 12 and UP scientist who has been a faculty member of SEAT since 1982. Yeah. He is from the Land and Water Resources Engineering Division or Laureate Po of Ayabe, teaching a variety of courses and acting as advisor or co-advisor for various BS, MS, and PhD thesis in different fields. He is well versed as at such a, as a advanced water resources planning, water management, groundwater hydrology, statistical hydrology, soil and water conservation, erosion and sediment transport, and water quality control engineering, and undergraduate um, courses such as hydrology, irrigation, and drainage engineering, water resources planning, open channel hydraulics, water control um, structures, water quality management, sanitary engineering. Soil engineering, fluid mechanics, mathematical methods in engineering, and among others. Uh, he also pursued a double major in agricultural engineering and civil environmental engineering as his PhD at Iowa State University in 1999 as a Fulbright Scholar, where he worked on a one-year postdoctoral study on contaminant transport in soils at the same university. He obtained his master's degree in irrigation engineering at the Catholic University of Leuven in, Bel uh, in Belgium in 1986, under the Belgian government scholarship. And his undergrad or BS degree is agricultural engineering here at UPLB in 1982. 
he took the 1982 Agricultural Engineering Board exam and he placed um, second doon po sa top. He was also taken part in, he has also taken part in various research projects and has co-authored and has authored or co-authored more than 50 peer-reviewed uh, journal articles, dami po, ano, monographs and book chap uh, chapters on various fields of research. He has recently completed his Ched Picari uh, project on the development of wireless sensor network-based um, water information system for efficient irrigation water management in the Philippines in collaboration with UC Berkeley. He has also served in different capacities, such as section editor, associate editor, editorial board member in different national and international journals, and is in, also involved in different committee and extension works, as well as plenary keynote, keynote and resource speaker, speaker or coordinator in numerous international and national conferences and other related trainings. He is also a consultant in some irrigation, hydrology, and water resources projects under DA, NEDA, uh, FAO, UNDP, USAID, and World Bank. Recently served as team leader in water resources develop team leader in water resources development planning specialist in the formulation of the National Irrigation Master Plan uh, for the duration of 2020 to 2023 for the Philippines. He has been a, recip a recipient of a numerous awards and distinctions, uh, including, let me highlight a few, UP Scientific Productivity Award. Uh, with confirmment as UP Scientist 3 from 2021 to 2023. Okay, Sayat Outstanding Senior Faculty, uh, Sayat Distinguished Alumnus Award, uh, AIE CHED uh, Best Teacher Award, and among others. So let us uh, all welcome to our Zoom stage for uh, our former, uh, the former chair of the Land and Water Resources Engineering Division of IABE and our former Dean, okay, Dr. Victor B. Elia. Good morning, Pastor. Uh, yeah, good morning. Thank you, uh, Anjali, for the introduction. And uh, I'd like to thank you too, and uh, the uh, Sayat Mandarin Committee for uh, inviting me here to be one of the speakers in this uh, webinar workshop. Let me first uh, share my screen. Now. Where is it? Start. Uh, does everybody see this now? See it, uh, Anjali? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, na late yung paglagin ko. Ano? Inaabot ko kapirasin ng kay Doc Rex. And I'm glad that uh, he focused on... Uh, some tips on the uh, research project development because my focus is uh, rather different it'll be uh, my talk will be focused more on mentoring uh, thesis students and i don't know if uh, dr Mar uh, maris uh, covered a part of it i don't know uh, i hope he did but uh, I'll, I'll be adding some more uh, for the benefit of uh, everyone especially the say at junior faculty. I understand um, the uh, junior faculty in our college uh, would like to be involved in research uh, at an early age. But uh, to tell you, uh, based on my experience, it's really tough to get a research funding if you are just a BS graduate, even if you're already an MS graduate, because you have to compete with the uh, you know the the uh, the prominent researchers and scientists for for the same uh, uh, funding. Now the the quickest way uh, to, to to get involved in research is through research mentoring. To do a good job in research mentoring, uh, mentoring through your thesis student, be it uh, a BS or undergrad or an MS or PhD student. So that will be my focus uh, for this morning. Um, I'll be uh, sharing with you some of my experiences uh, when it comes to research mentoring. And uh, hopefully you will gain some uh, insights and ideas um, on research mentoring. And uh, I'll be giving you uh, 
some tips, although I would, as you'll see, these are <laughs> commonsensical tips, uh, but are often overlooked. Let, let me start by stressing the importance of uh, good research mentoring. Um, the the um, junior faculty here may have uh, their own reasons no, for doing research mentoring. And I'd like to emphasize good research mentoring because you can mentor uh, uh, in, uh, you know, um, um, the lower level type of uh, effort that you can exert. But uh, I'd like to emphasize uh, good research mentoring. And as I've said, uh, you may have uh, personal reasons. Maybe you're aiming for promotion or award or uh, research projects, whatever. But you have to go beyond your personal reasons. And you have to think uh, about, uh, you know, uh, view the broader perspective of uh, doing good, good research mentoring. But if you're doing good uh, research mentoring, you're essentially doing good service to the academy, to the scientific community, and uh, of course, the country as a whole. Because uh, eventually you'll be producing uh, graduates with undergrad, MS, or PhD. So are essentially contributing to the academy, the scientific community, and the country with uh, your capacity building contribution. And uh, indirectly, uh, you'll also be contributing to the development of new knowledge through your thesis students with you as uh, a good mentor. And uh, of course, you'll be contributing uh, to the advancement of science and technology, especially engineering technology. And uh, of course, uh, all this would uh, stimulate further research and uh, even open up uh, opportunities for uh, international collaborations. And uh, ultimately, you'll be contributing to the country's economy. Now, if you think about this, uh, this listing, this also applies to uh, the importance of uh, being a good researcher. And uh, it also applies even to, you know, importance of publishing your research uh, outputs. You'll be uh, contributing to all of this if you do all those things, to be uh, a good researcher, a good research mentor, and uh, uh, if you are able to publish your research uh, results. Now, before I go any further, I'd like you to realize, especially the, uh, the junior faculty, how lucky you are uh, in your generation. Because if you compare it, compare your generation with ours, no? my generation was, uh, my, uh, you know, I graduated here for my BS uh, in 1982. Uh, and as introduced, I did my MS in the mid eighties. Uh, so I would say my early career life, uh, when I was your age, the junior faculty here was uh, in the eighties and nineties. And just, I would say you started in the 2000s no? uh, until now, maybe 2010 onwards. But in any case, uh, you should be lucky that you already have all the modern technologies. No? You have the high powered laptops, desktop, and all the useful softwares uh, installed uh, in them at your disposal. You have the Digicom, smartphones, uh, and you have the internet. In, in our generation, what do we have? <laughs> we have typewriters. And at best, we have the DOS-based computers in the late 80s. You know, the Windows-based uh, computer uh, came out in the early 90s, mid 90s. Uh, we didn't even have our own personal uh, computer back then. So imagine, no? uh, if you're a mentor, if you're a researcher in this generation, you are, you know, your work becomes so convenient, a lot more convenient compared to ours <laughs> in the 80s and 90s. You should be lucky in that sense. As a mentor, that'll be to your advantage. Even as uh, a mentee, uh, you'll be pursuing your MS, you'll become a mentee. Uh, you have all these uh, tools at your disposal. Uh, aside from that, uh, in the old days, we have uh, we only have this library. And uh, uh, even then, we, we in our library, we all have a few uh, journal subscriptions. So imagine uh, doing lip review literature back then, no? uh, how it is to do such a thing. Like uh, these days, uh, we have the online library sources and uh, online search engines. No? So as a mentor and a mentee, uh, and as a researcher, uh, you have a big advantage in your generation. 
uh, it's another thing. In our um, BS programs back in the 70s and uh, 80s when I graduated, we, we, we had a generalized program uh, like in ag engineering. We didn't have uh, the thesis option yet. We developed the thesis option uh, uh, program for the undergraduate engineering courses at SAIAT in the 80s. I was even involved in the curricular uh, revisions back then. Uh, unlike in your case, you, uh, you have the thesis option ready. So you, you, in a way, you have already been exposed to mentoring, research mentoring early on, uh, like in our case. No? So we, we only learned mentoring when uh, we did MS and the mentoring PhD. So again, uh, you're lucky in that sense. And uh, also in our case, uh, in our generation, we were not forced to uh, pursue our graduate degree programs early. Uh, like in your case, you are compelled to do so because of the up or out policy and the publish or perish uh, policy. And you can earn your PhD, PhD at an early age and uh, be exposed to higher level research mentoring uh, early. In my case, I did my PhD uh, in 95. I was already 35 back then. I did the double major and I finished it in four years time. Uh, I was 39 when I graduated. And uh, then I did one more year for postdoc. I came back here, but I was already uh, 40, 40 years old. So uh, that's the only time I started doing high level mentoring. Uh, I imagine. So we, Essentially, we started at the same time, you know, 2000 onwards. That's the start of my research mentoring experience. No? Before that, uh, we were just advising practicum students. It's, you know, it's different compared to uh, advising these students. And back then, we have uh, very uh, you know, scarce opportunities for scholarships and fellowships. I like this stage here, overflowing scholarships, fellowships. Your duty is just one of them. You have uh, a lot more than that. And uh, you also have overflowing research funding opportunities. Uh, like in our case, you know, when I finished my MS, my thesis was on modeling. I was trying to submit a proposal on modeling. And the funding agency, what is that? What is modeling? <laughs> it's not in their vocabulary. It's not in their priority. So how, how can you get funded if uh, that is the case? They, they prioritize those that uh, have uh, direct impact impact so to speak you know they have a different definition of impact but these days uh it's different you have overflowing even uh newly graduated uh, phd like you you know there's some of you here can easily get uh, funding uh from big uh, research funding um, agencies and then uh, back in the 80s uh we embarked more not on research but on training and consultancy and we virtually had no idea what our senior counterparts were doing in terms of research and publications and publications was not even in our vocabulary what is that in the old days if you're an engineer uh, you are essentially more glorified if you are taken or working as part-time consultant not as a researcher but, but these days that has been uh, you know changed and uh, also, you know, what we, the seniors, uh, have been doing in terms of research and publications with, uh, you know, the information aids. You can easily check our Google Scholar through other means, websites, even social media. You, you know what we're doing. Uh, in the old days, uh, you know, have no means of knowing what they were doing. And then, um, uh, in the old days, we only had a few to, uh, to uh, look up to as role models. And uh, nobody gave us tips on how to do research metric. We had to learn it ourselves. In your case, uh, you have a lot of role models to, to emulate, uh, not only within SEAT, but uh, outside of our college. And you have younger ones, you don't even have to uh, take us. Uh, me and uh, Doc Rex and Doc Maris as role models, you can take uh, younger ones like uh, Doc Monet, imagine. Uh, she's the youngest uh, Seat faculty who uh, became a UP scientist. You can emulate uh, what she did. No? So there are a lot of uh, advantages that you have in your generation, which are instrumental in becoming a good research mentor. No? So. 
realize how lucky you are, okay? <laughs> now, let me share with you some of my experiences as a research mentor, and uh, eventually you'll gain some, some insights. If you're a research mentor, you will have to deal with uh, various types of mentees. There are those that are highly motivated, and there are those that are less motivated. You can, you can sense that no? uh, in your dealings with your advices. There are those that are serious and there are those that are happy-go-lucky. You know, sometimes you'll see them, you know, <laughs> just traveling around. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> those that are highly ambitious and uh, there, there are those who would take the easy way out. Uh, I once had a student who wanted to do a, a thesis that looked like a five-year research project. <laughs> Imagine that, it's highly ambitious. But... Eventually, we toned it down to tone it down to uh, a doable uh, thesis. And then um, there are those who can uh, do independent work with uh, minimum supervision, uh, but there are those who uh, need a lot of supervision, you know. And then uh, there are those who can write well, and uh, there are those who will uh, give you a headache reading their manuscript. <laughs> Difficulty in reading communication. And then uh, there are those who can publish the research work with minimum supervision. And uh, there are those who, who won't care about uh, publishing. Uh, to date, I have uh, produced uh, about 30 MS and PhD, you know, 10 PhD and uh, 20 MS. Uh, of all those uh, graduates, uh, only half of them were able to publish. The others don't care about publishing, or uh, maybe they're having difficulty. But, uh, it's not yet done. I am trying my best to, you know, get them uh, get their work published. Some of them. So the, the point is, there's no one size fits all strategy to handle various types. You just have to be creative. You have to uh, find your way through. Okay, because you have to deal with different types. There's no one size fits all strategy. You have to be, kumbaga, if you know how to play a musical instrument, we be dukay. Maybe you can talaga ang my chat. Yeah, nice to see you too. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, the point. And then uh, when I was invited by by Dr. Revilla, Angelian, so I said, "Ano pong bibigay kong tips dito?" So I look back uh, to my essentially twenty year experience, starting in two thousand. Two thousand. Uh, May nabigay sa akin isang MS advice. Uh, and then 2001, one MS and one PhD. So sabi ko, parang mga common sense. But, but uh, there, may isa pang ano pala to, slides. Let me finish this before I give you the tips. Other experiences. Um, yeah, uh, I also learned that um, all of them, all mentees would need your guidance as a mentor. Even the, the best mentees that you will encounter. Okay, talagang hindi mo sila pwedeng pabayaan. You need their, uh, they will need your guidance. Okay, they will need you. Okay. And then uh, another uh, thing is that hindi uh, lahat makaka-graduate. Okay. Uh, this is a, a Hard reality. Not all of them would be able, would be able to graduate. Some uh, would eventually disappear. Uh, incidentally, I only had one PhD student who disappeared, but uh, I kept on trying to, you know, uh, help her uh, graduate. But uh, there are circumstances beyond uh, anyone uh, anyone's control that uh, uh, simply. Uh, would, uh, you know, uh, make it difficult for the PhD student to graduate. And then, uh, sabi ko na to, not all those who have graduated can publish. Some don't really care about publications, especially those that are not in the academy. Okay? They, they won't care. But those who are in the academy, uh, some of them would be able to publish, but the others uh, would need your help. Uh, so again, let me emphasize that uh, mentoring is, uh, you know, 
requires mentoring requires a lot of creativity. It's essentially an art. There's no one uh, strategy for 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 all the times. Just like in teaching, when you are hard, my junior faculty, when you are hard as a teacher, nobody taught you how to teach. You have to find your way through. Ganon din sa sa mentoring. You have to find your way through. But uh, if you're exposed to good mentors when you do your BS, your MS, PhD, you're lucky. You can uh, you know pick some of the good things that your good mentors uh, did to you. So and this is Abiko. When I was invited by uh, Angelic, sabi ano sabi ko dito na tips na pwede niyong mapakinabangan. And I look back, sabi ko parang puro common sense naman ang in-apply ko. I just applied commonsensical uh, techniques. But you know, oftentimes those commonsensical techniques are often, often, oftentimes they are overlooked. Diba? So let me, let, let this serve as reminders. So, so ito lang ginawa ko. I did not, I did not do anything special when it comes to research mentoring. I just, uh, applied commonsensical uh, you know, techniques. And uh, here are some of them. Uh, number one, you have to always give your time and undivided attention to your mentees, especially during consultation and throughout their program. Okay, time talaga, time saka attention. When, when I was um, the chair and even the dean of say, uh, every time my mentee or advisee comes to me, talagang tatabi ko lahat na gawain ko at harapin ko siya with my full undivided attention. Ganun ang ginagawa ko. I learned that from my PhD uh, mentor. I had three uh, major professors kasi I, I pursued that only triple major yan. Double lang yung binigay sa akin. Wala pa doon ang bigyan ng Iowa State ng tatlo. So dalawa lang binigay. But I had three major advisors. One of them uh, was the chair of the Ag and Biosystems Engineering of at Iowa State University. Every time, maman, chairman siya, ha? chairman ng AB. Every time I consult, talagang kita ko, it's the same table doon sa corner niya. Pupunta kami doon, iiwan niya lahat ng trabaho ko. Yun na pick up ko sa kanya. No? So I, I did the same. Pagka may pumupunta, kahit walang appointment yan, talagang tatabi ko lahat ng gawain ko. Harapin ko siya. Time and attention. And uh, even after deanship, uh, I've been doing the same thing. And even now, imagine I'm on sabbatical. I did not give up. I did not give up mentoring. So pag sila nag-consult to email, messenger, or whatever, andyan ako. Andyan ako parate. I respond quickly, promptly. Okay. Kasi gano'n yun. If you're a mentee, what do you, what do you want from your uh, mentor? Diba gusto mo bigyan ka ng oras sa attention? Just give, them, uh, give it to them. Time and attention. Ilang as simple. No? Ito, uh, be accessible, of course, approachable, and keep all communications lines open. Important yeah. You have to be connected at all times with your mentees. No? And use all channels of communication, email, SMS, Messenger, Viber, whatever. The important thing is your mentee should be able to reach out to you if he or she has any problem, especially on her thesis book his or her thesis work uh, quickly or uh, conveniently without going to your office, especially during the pandemic. Diba? <laughs> we were all taught how to, to use uh, this uh, online communication channels. So, kailangan gawin mo yan para talagang maganda yung mentoring. And of course, uh, hindi lahat eh pare-pareho. You have to be flexible with your approach, okay? And uh, you have to allow for individual differences. Makikita niyo yan eh, kasi your, your advices will be taking some courses under you, di ba? So doon pa lang kita mo ng kakayahan ng advice mo. Anong kaya nitong gawin sa thesis niya? So huwag mong impose yung napakahiram na topic o pag nagko-conceptualize, huwag mong itondan mo, ibagay mo sa kanyang kakayahan. Ano? So, be flexible. Kahit gusto mo mong pagawayan, may ongoing project ha, pero medyo mahirap sa kanya. Ano? So, kailang itonda mo. Be, you allow for some uh, individual differences in terms of uh, capability. At ito, critical ito. No? Uh, sa research, uh, this is so critical. The, uh, the initial stage of the thesis uh, research implementation is the conceptualization of the topic. Okay. 
Now, uh, sa atin, UPLB, uh, kailangan matuto yung mga estudyante natin, mga thesis uh, advices natin, mga mentees, mag-conceptualize, di ba? Pero kadalasan, uh, in most cases, they, they find it very difficult to conceptualize. Diba? In my case, in most cases, talagang pumapasok ako dyan. Hindi makapag-conceptualize. Itatry ko sa challenge. Sige, mag, anong gusto mong topic? Topic. Sige, let's select a topic and then conceptualize something. And then show to me. And then sabi ko, ah, hindi pwede yan. Pwede natin ganito, ganyan. So, kayong dalawa dyan ang magbubuhi. You and the mentee. Huwag niyong pabayaan ang mentee niyo. Kadalasan kung ano nung lalabas dyan. Na in the end, ah, hindi pa na pwede, hindi pa na pa-visible. Makita mo yan. No? So, you have to to guide your mentees in conceptualization of the research topic. And make sure that's doable. And make sure it, it contains all the essential elements. Lahat na, na doon ang research problem, hypothesis, objectives, methodology, and even the review of literature. Minsan, excited yung estudyante. Ah, Sir, gusto kong gawin ng ganito. Ayun pala na, ayun, parang nagawa na yun. Pag gawin mo ng review of literature, makakit na nagawa na yun. So, anong kaibahan ang gagawin mo? So, ito, critical yan. Kailangan talagang uh, active ang papel ng ano dyan. Uh, you have to play an active role in this stage of the research of your mentee. Um, ah, ito, uh, siyempre, uh, again, commonsensical tip ito. Siyempre, dyan dapat ang all-out support mo sa mentees mo. From the start to finish. Okay? Uh, yung support comes in so many different forms, di ba? Pwedeng may project ka, siyempre napakadali niya. Ano, can provide financial support, logistical support, equipment support, uh, access to your facilities, to your... et cetera. Napakarami yan. Um, um, in my case, uh, kanina, inabutan ko yung kay Doclex. Eh. Napakarami yung project. Alam niyo kung... Sa mga project na ganyan, talagang napakarami yan si, si Doc Rex compared sa akin. Nagsimula ako sa maliit. Imagine when I came back here uh, for my, uh, after my PhD program, uh, wala akong makuha ng research funding. No? I even had to to bite the uh, the call for the UPLB basic research program. No? 150,000 pesos budget. But imagine I was able to support one MS student out of that. And then, um, luckily, may mga, okay, na EDA bar ako, nakaspag-subordin ako ng ilang MS sa ilang BS thesis, and then pumasok ko yung Sanrem, and uh, consequently, recently, Picari, and doon, marami ako na support ng mentees. So support, of course, uh, obviously would come in that form, bigyan mo ng support sa two-year project, pero hindi lang yan ang support na pwede mo ibigay sa mentees mo. Moral support. Moral support. Importante, your mentee should feel that you are there for them. Support yan eh. Hindi mo sila pinapabayaan. Moral support uh, is equally important as all those material support. And never give up on your mentees. No? Yung sinasabi ko kanina na isang PhD uh, na nawala na, I never gave up on her. Kahit na Nawala siya. Ako pa nag-reach out. Eh. Ibis na siya nag-reach out sa akin. Sir, paano ako makagraduate? Ako pa yung <laughs> nag-reach out. Because I didn't want to give up on her. Uh, especially your deity. <laughs> Kaya lang, uh, ang daming ano, ano, eh, mahirap pagka mga gano'n na, na pagka-anak, namatay. Mga gano'n. <laughs> mahirap pagka gano'n na. na. Tapos, nawala na lang. Ang daming yung email. Uh, at sa email, be the last one to respond. I checked all my previous emails when I was doing this. Sabi ko, meron ba akong kasalanan na hindi na nag-respond? Binalikan ko lahat ng email ko. Sabi ko, I was the last one to respond to all the emails. At wala na akong narinig sa kanila. So that's the time sabi ko, bakit talaga nag-give up na? Oh, let them give up, but you as mentors never give up on your mentees. Okay. Wala, wala magagawa. Talagang gano'n. Actually, kinoundan ko na yung kanyang topic, eh, dissertation. Mahirap yung una eh. Kasi, sir, syempre, when you conceptualize, babagay mo dun sa, sa kanyang degree. Ano? Kung PhD yan, dapat higher level. Eh, 
siguro nagka problema sa execution and implementation sabi ko sige let's work on something that i think you can do sabi ng ganon so kinoon daw na namin na kailangan mo diyan na okay doable na talaga eh angat pa rin sa ms pero medyo binaba ako ng konti yung standards of ms you know? but even then talagang i don't know what up <laughs> but kahit na ganon don't give up on your mentees kahit ganon no? so stick to your mentees until completion kahit di ma-complete sige lang and then you monitor the research progress of your mentees no? maraming para and ask them to present progress report even uh, orally or in written form maraming para para eh you no know, kung walang ganyan minsan yung mga happy go lucky sabi yung mga types na ganun ah hindi naman hanap si sir ganun hanapan mo na ganyan mo pa-process ang gumawa di ba so ano mo lang ask for some progress report and uh, mapo-force yan eh na gumawa and then ito important ito kasi kahit napakarami mong research okay kahit napakalaki ng budget mo hindi mo napapublish kahit marami kang estudyante these students kung hindi mo nagpa-publish yung research results, para ka rin hindi nag-research, di ba? Kasi you would know, siguro papasa sa committee yung research work, okay, yung output, pero the real test of the validity, the soundness of the research results is through peer review, publication. Kasi iba na yan eh, Kasi hindi mo kilala mga yan nag-review, mga expert. At pag hindi po masayan, aba, there's something wrong with your with your with the research topic, the research itself. Kaya critical yung conceptualization. Doon pa lang dapat inaayos na. And uh, by the way, uh, hindi naman siguro mag-overtime, Angela, no? kasi I'd like to insert uh, some expert uh, excerpts from uh, my presentation sa ERDT back in 2018. Uh, they invited me to present something on uh, helping mentors uh, in publishing their research work. And so, doon, para ka may mapulot pa kayo doon. Para sa inyo to. But Again, uh, yeah, uh, another thing is that uh, you know, busy tayo sa faculty. Sabi, sabi nyo, busy ko sa teaching, dami kong chechekan, dami mga junior faculty. Dinaanan ko yan. Imagine in the 80s, more than 12 units ako mga napakarami, dadaan kayo talaga sa ganyan. Pero once maka-PhD kayo, mag-iba ay inyong, inyong trabaho eh. Balance yan. May teaching ka, may research. So sige lang, darating kayo sa, sa gano'n. But uh, you have to be patient. Kahit yung mga, ano na, kahit sa mga generation namin, you really have to, to uh, be patient. So ito yung ano, sinasabi ko, uh, excerpts, uh, excerpts from my uh, previous talk on uh, research mentoring sa ERDT. Kasi nung time na yun, parang tatlo lang kaming naandun. Okay, din ilapan nyo pang panahon yun. Somehow, I think one of you from IE was also there. Pero sabi ko, eh, maraming ano yun eh, buong ano yun eh, at ERDT from different schools. Sabi ko, nag-benefit sila sa talk ko. May mga taga-saya, di man lang alam kung ano yung sinabi ko. So, I tried inserting this dito. If I don't mind, uh, siguro ano lang ito. Kunti na lang ito, Angeli. Ano? Uh, ito lang. Um, alam niya naman ito. Ano, Nakadaanan niyo kung kaya ay nag-MS, PhD, IBS. May thesis option na kayo. At nag-try kayo mag-publish. Uh, dadaan kayo sa ganitong proseso. Prepare the manuscript, submit the journal, and then it will undergo a peer review process. Then titignan ng mga reviewers yan. Actually, editor pa lang, titignan niyan. Is this acceptable or not? Pwede ka na ma-reject dyan. Diyan pa lang. Pero pag sa, tingnan ng editor, ah, pwede ito. Eh, padala niya sa reviewers. Three, at least three peer reviewers. And then, uh, papadala kayo ng results, kung major revision, etc. Uh, si Okay. Uh, sige, malapit na tayo, Angel. Okay. Bilang ko, sir. <laughs> okay, sige. Sige. Uh, and then, uh, mag-revise kayo. You have to uh, address the comments. And then, just resubmit. 
doon pwede ka ding ma-reject kung hindi maganda if you did not do a good job in the revision and in the in addressing the comments pwede kang pwede pa ring ma-reject yung paper so you know publishing is not that easy hindi ko mo sabi uh, ang common notion na rin ko uh, wala kasing tayong magsulat hindi lang pagsulat yan eh <laughs> oh marami siyang advice kasi may public no uh, kailangan talaga maayos yung ano yung publication mo okay siya uh, sige malapit na tayo So ano bang qualities ng magandang uh, manuscript? So let me share with you uh, my thoughts on what a good publishable manuscript should look like. First of all, it should offer original and new knowledge. Importante yan. Dapat talagang something new ang pinapagitan ng manuscript. Valid yung findings, scientifically well-written, organized, appropriate title, effective content, well-defined objectives, up to date review literature kasama din sa manuscript yan and with appropriate sound and scientifically acceptable methodologies and research design and with rigorous data analysis okay present uh, adequate and substantive results that meet the specified objectives uh your tables and figures well prepared and uh, there's proper interpretation and discussion of results and your conclusion should uh, be supported by data and analysis and it should the, the work the whole uh, paper publication should stimulate further research both. and of course with acceptable length mga journals dapat sa ano limit ka lang sa 15 20 pages e yung thesis manuscript mo napakahaba so should be able to compress your this is worth into the acceptable uh, length. And of course, it uh, contains the, the basic components, like the love strap, intro, okay, et cetera, and conclusion, even uh, acknowledgements. So you see, uh, ito, you can also use this in the conceptualization of your uh, main piece, this is work, right? It can guideline ito. You aim for publication, to magbasa yun. Sa conversation pa lang, ayusin mo na. Make sure that you'll be able to get something like this, to do something like this. Now, isang problema sa pag-publish, yung pag-select ng journals. Selection of journals, one of the problems. If you're, uh, you know, let's say, atayo. So, as much as possible, publish in engineering journals. Okay? Marami sa atin, publish kung saan-sana. Saan -sana. It's okay kung related naman doon. Pero as much as possible, uh, sa engineering journals tayo mag-publish. At hindi lang basta journal, uh, well, of course, you have to choose the, the journal that best fits the topic. And as much as possible, aim for uh, uh, Web of Science Index, or at least a Scopus Index. Web of Science, dating ISI yan. Journals. Kasi mas ano to, visible to. Mas masasahit yung work nyo kung dito kayo mag-publish. Alay ko mga journal lang na walang wala sa database ng Larry Vitor. Pakita ko mamaya. Ito. Uh, makita nyo kung Web of Science index yan to this website. Larry Vitor. You can actually just uh, search the the actual title of the journal. It will show up if, if it is indexed in WS. Otherwise, ang dami na ngayon. Napakarami ngayong naglilitawan na journals. Unlike in our time, And even in the early 2000s, kunti pa lang. Ngayon, napakarami na ng journal options. And uh, another tip, you can check the track record of the journal. Uh, frequency niya, yung promptness ng review. Imagine na uh, these days, uh, mga journal na in one month's time, ay tapos ang review. Ano? In the old days, imagine my first publication uh, for my PhD came out in 2001. Okay, back in 2000, dito ko na ginatinabaho yung publication. Uh, 2000, it took more than a year bago na-publish. Ang tagal ng review process nun. Uh, at yung journal na yun, sa American Society of Engineers, uh, taas ng rejection doon. Pero ang taas ng impact factor. Uh, I-check the track record. Ito, important ito. Ano. Marami na ngayong <laughs> journals. Kasama to, mga tinatawag na predatory journals and publishers, even conferences. Dami ganito. So beware, huh? Napakadali. Every now and then, dami kong nare-receive sa email. Oh, 
We are inviting you to publish so and so uh, sa journal na to. Chichikan ko journal. Ah, predatory to. Ano bang ibig ng predatory? Those that exploit the gold open access uh, model, open access type journal ito eh. Pero napakamahal. Mahal ng bayad. Uh, talagang ano ito, money making. At isa pa, isang karakteristik nito, walang peer review talagang nangyayari. Parang napakasimpleng ano lang review. Uh, hindi yung masasabing, masasabing technical review. Ano? Predatory. Uh, how would you know whether predatory or hindi? You can use this website by pills. No? Nakikita niya. Type mo, napakarami. In-update to uh, regularly. So type niyo yung journal title and even the publisher, lalabas yan dyan. Ano? predatory. At yung mga predatory na yan, remember, this is not these publications. This the, the papers you, you're able to publish in these journals and even publishers are not honored sa International Publication Award. Even sa UP scientists, hindi yan yung honor. Ha? Mga ganyan. Kung predatory yan. Pang publisher. Now, ito. Important ito. When uh, you do the revision, uh, of course, you, have, you should be able to address the uh, both the technical and the editorial comments. And you have to prepare uh, a summary of how you address the comments. Dito nagkaka-problema ang, ang, ang advice ng mentee. I remember one time, uh, meron akong isang mentee, PhD, uh, from your from his public, uh, dissertation. Na-accept siya sa ISI ito, uh, pero with major revisions. So as para part ng training niya, kasi ako, first time I published talaga ako lang trabaho niya. Gusto ko matutunan niya rin. Dapat ganun eh. Matutunan ng advice yung mag-address, mag-revise. So pinabayahan ko siya. And then uh, sabi ko, pakita mo sa akin bago natin resubmit. Ang makita ko yung revision niya, at saka the way he addressed the, the comments, sabi ko, ako, mare-reject ito. <laughs> so doon papasok ang men mentor. Okay? So, you know what I did? Talagang ako na nagsulat, no? <laughs> ako na nag-revise. Binago ko ang wording niya. Halos lahat ako na. Pati rejoinder, ako na nagsulat. And uh, fortunately, we got it published. No? Imagine kung pinabayaan ko yun. Wala. Wala na ako na sa publication. Na-reject yun. <laughs> Kasi I've been doing, uh, I've, been, I've also been working as a peer reviewer every now and then. I know what to look for. I know how to review. So, alam ko kung papasa o hindi yung... <laughs> in paper. So, as you, you as mentors, dapat, uh, 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 I suggest na yung active thinker, even sa revision. Yeah, of course, uh, I can do that. Misan, uh, talagang valid yung comment ng reviewer. Kaya lang, follow mo siya kung talagang valid. Kung talagang sigurado ka sa finding siya, you can justify naman. And then ito, minsan, yung estudyante, kakabit na lahat, committee members. Eh, para naman ma-deserve nila yung co-authorship, eh, let them also take on some of the, <laughs> the work, yung revision, saka pag-address ng comments. Okay? And then, uh, don't miss the deadline. Uh, sayang. And of course, be patient. Ito pa, uh, proper authorship, uh, uh, ito nga, uh, ito, importante ito, ano, basta thesis yan ng student, okay? Dapat ang first author, estudyante mo. Sa kanyang thesis yan, eh, kahit pa-advisor ka, kahit co-owner ka ng intellectual material na yan, siya pa rin ang first author. Okay? Hindi pwedeng ikaw, kahit na ikaw nagsulat. Remember, may isang paper ako, isang thesis na halos ako na nagsulat lahat, ako na nag wala siyang pakialam eh. But still, siyang nilagay kong first author. That's the way to do it. Okay? Siya dapat ang first. And then yung ibang members, kung committee members, make sure talaga may contribution sila. Kung wala naman, eh, medyo <laughs> magdalawang isip kayo. Unless talaga may contribution sila. And then, dapat uh, complete and proper citation na uh, uh, avoid this multiple citation na uh, submit ka dito, submit sa kanya. Sino mga na? No, I don't do that. No? And of course, don't fabricate data. Dapat kung anong nakuha nyo, kahit yan ay, kung ano man ang lumabas sa experiment, whatever, 
Resort sparingnya nih. Resort sparingnya. So don't publicate any data. And of course, you have to provide proper acknowledgement. Okay, people help you secondary data sources. Funding agency important niya, no? I remember in my Chad Picari project, we've been reminded, sabi niya, pag nag-publish kayo, make sure nakalagay ang Chad Picari. Talaga, I, I made sure yung mga publication namin. We, incidentally, we had 10 uh, publications out of, the, of my Chad Picari project. Talagang, uh, I made sure that uh, nakalagay yan. And of course, never plagi plagiarize. No? Uh, luckily, we have this tool already. Use that for checking plagiarism. I remember one time, I am a student ako. No? Talagang halos pareho nung dati kong MS student ang ginawa. And then, para naman di mo offend, sabi ko, okay, can we do, let's do a plagiarism check para mga ganun. Uh, you can do it that way. So, para siya mismo mag-discover, ah, o nga. So, ayun, nag-opportunity siya na baguhin. Talagang hindi <laughs> ko open go up yan. So, luckily, may kanyang tayong tools these days. Okay, ah, uh, one minute lang yata ng overtime ko, Angeli. Dito na tayo sa katapusan. So uh, let me, uh, in closing, highlight again the importance of good research mentoring. If you can do good research mentoring, ito yung sabi ko, uh, it's the quickest way to get involved in research. Kahit na BS graduate pa lang kayo, nag-mentor kayo ng this student. Ahira maglaban sa mga katulad ni Doc Rex, ni Doc Maris, magsabi kayo ko, uh, <laughs> submit kayo ng proposal, silang kalaban mo, sino pipiliin dyan? Siyempre may track record. Eh, wala ka mang track record, wala ka pa publication. Yan na, sa mentoring, magkaka-track record ka dyan. Just make sure that you do good research mentoring. Okay? And uh, <laughs> I highlighted that, napakaswerte nyo sa generation nyo compared sa amin. So take advantage of that. At uh, there's no one-size-fits-all strategy uh, because uh, mentees are all different. They are different from uh, one another. So mag you just have to be creative. Bibido ka talaga. Pero may mga, in general, uh, you can apply commonsensical uh, tips that are often overlooked. Okay? <laughs> Time, attention, support, etc. Patience. Uh, of course, as mentors, you will play a key role in publishing your mentee's work. And uh, preparation of high quality manuscripts, selection of journals, etc., are critical in scientific publishing. And of course, always observe ethics in publishing, you know, plagiarism, okay, uh, authorship, order, etc. And uh, most of, uh, okay, make time to publish. Okay. Sayang eh. Sabi nga, may lumabas sa Facebook page ng graduate school. Sabi nga, yung research na hindi na-publish is not a research. Parang hindi ka rin nag-research. Parang, parang ganun yung tema. Tama yun. I agree with that. Okay. So make time to publish. Kailangan nyo yan. Apur out, uh, publish or perish policy. Baka junior faculty. Sa MS thesis nyo, makakapublish kayo yan. Uh, and most of all, uh, ikaw na sama pala yan. No, delete ko pala. Uh, last dito, be patient. Yun na siguro ang pinaka-importante kong masasabi. Be patient. <laughs> so that's all I've got for you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for that uh, presentation, Sir Sir Elia. And uh, as I mentioned kanina, no, medyo hindi po maganda yung pakiramdam ni Sir, pero again, thank you po dun sa time na pinigin ninyo yeah, para sa... May sinat ako eh, pero okay lang. Saka po sa party. So, what we have learned from the presentation of um, Dr. Elia, let me summarize a few. So, first, uh, yung presentation po ni Sir focused on mentoring thesis students. So, maganda po ito kasi yung mga previous presentations po natin from Dr. Dimafelis and Dr. Amadlang Bayan sa research naman po yung naging focus nila. So naging uh, malawak po yung talk natin ngayon uh, umaga. And uh, Dr. Elia also mentioned good research mentoring is uh, essentially, you know, we go beyond our personal interest, not just uh, focusing on promotion and all, pero basically to give good service to our nation, to the profession, to our university, and to the country. 
And uh, d- doon po sa kanya mga experiences and insights, I think yung mga magandang na-mention ni Sir Don, uh, we will be encountering, well, I think as mentors, no, junior mentors, we will be encountering different types of mentees or advices. And so there is really no a one-size-fits-all na strategy for mentoring. We have to adjust. We have to be flexible doon sa mga various types of mentees na pwede natin ma-encounter. But in general, gano'n man kagaling yung mga mentees natin, lahat yan, uh, they will be needing our guidance as their mentor. Uh, Dr. Elia also gave a few tips para po sa uh, mga mentors. No? So firstly, we have to give undivided attention dun sa mga mentees natin. Uh, be approachable, be flexible, uh, give not just uh, material support but uh, mostly yung moral support na pwede natin ibigay dun sa ating uh, mga mentees. Uh, always provide or create yung continuous monitoring ng progress. Kasi binsan masipag lang sila sa simula, but eventually mawawala na. Uh, we also encourage them to publish kasi yun yung validation na maganda talaga yung naging result ng research natin. And yun nga, na-mention ni Sir, pinakalas na advice is we always have to be patient dun sa mga mentees natin. So thank you for that presentation, um, Dr. Elia. So we, we now open the floor for the questions ng ating mga uh, participants or mga attendees po natin. If you have any, maglagay na lang po tayo sa group chat natin. Ayan, ito na po si Roman. Ayan. Pwede pong ilagay natin doon sa chat. Pero let me read yung first question na na-receive po namin kanina. Okay. So we have one question here from um, Dr. Pataksil. Ayan. So we know that uh, we cannot always get a positive outcome in all projects. So para po ito sa lahat ng resource speakers natin. Uh, pwedeng kahit po sino sa inyo yung sumagot. So again, we know that we cannot always get a positive outcome in all projects. Any words of wisdom on how uh, to build or, ha- or on how uh, budding researchers or junior researchers can handle failures in research? Siguro po based sa mga naging experiences ninyo, sir, uh, ano po kaya yung mga naging strategies ninyo when you encounter failure dun sa mga early stages ng research ninyo? Anyone from the speakers uh, would want to answer. Hello, Anjali. Hi, pa, sir. Good morning, pa, sir. Yeah. Medyo suki ako niyan eh, yung failure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lalo sa, ano, yung, uh, yung mga baguhan. Ako, ako kasi, you know, uh, talag- wala pa eh, kakaunti pa lang yung projects ko. So, talagang, in fact, uh, the question is siguro at the end pa ng project, pero ano pa lang, ano? Uh, yung failure sometimes maswerte siguro ako no na namimit ko siya in the middle eh in the middle of the of the project when i say failure it's like i have this expectation ng result in the middle of the project pero iba no iba yung nangyayari so uh, uh, very stressful kasi you know uh, the the expectation is, is is not met no pero there uh, i i think no to 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 remedy that uh, that situation uh, you report it right away doon sa inyong handler for example uh, ako meron akong featured uh, funded project so may ano kami meron kaming uh, manage may may manager no may nagahandle ng na team sa amin yung featured and then we report it right away kasi baka sakaling ano pa eh uh, may may meron pang paraan no or meron pang uh, adjustment na magagawa just so malimit malimit yung ano malimit yung or ma, ma define ma quantify ma, ma qualify ma qualify yung yung gusto mong gawin and hindi talaga let's say it's not working it's not it's really not working either, either after several 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 iterations uh, it's 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 still not uh, working so that's one. That's one of my advice. Number two, pwedeng ano, pwedeng during the kasi di ba when when you ano, when you when you say that problem as part of your report, no, you can you can report it naman eh, during the progress uh, monitoring monitoring of the funder and during the submission of the progress report. Sometimes dun lumalabas yung contribution ng ano, ng mga managers. Uh, sinasabi nila, Doc Marish, uh I I suggest uh, you you talk with let's say to uh, this this expert here from from UP Diliman and uh, 
pwede nating ano, pwede nating uh, masolusyunan pa yung yung problema. So in my case ganun, ganun yung advice ko. Now, sa ngayon hindi pa kasi tapos yung project. So hindi hindi pa ako talaga nakaranas na yung at the end may failure. But nakasama ko dati sa isang project si ano, si si Dr. si Dr. Franco. Okay, there was a uh, yung yung sa yung may project kami sa Samar. Ano, direct to the point si Dr. Franco. <laughs> Talagang dinerecho na niya. But the project was simply a failure. The project, the project na inaano namin na uh, na tinotrouble shoot. <laughs> naging naging prank siya in a sense na yun daw irrigation, no, the irrigation ay mali in the first place ang pagka-design. <laughs> So when they built it, when they built it, of course, mali na, mali na yung mali na yung uh, system, mali na yung irrigation system. Kasi meron daw basic na flow na ano na na ginawa yung yung project. Okay? So yun, can you imagine? Ibang tao pa ang nakakita nung failure nung noong project. So uh, I uh, ang ano ba solution dito pagka sa, pagka sa research? Uh, well, a, a fallback, a fallback maybe like a, a, a continuation is is that is that acceptable maybe to the funder like uh, you can you can make like an an offshoot to 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 the first uh, project and. Uh, Yeah, I, th- I think that that would be one possible solution kasi maintindihan naman siguro ng ating mga funders no just in case just in case uh, nagkaroon talaga ng failure to meet the the expected uh, result. Thank you uh, Ma- Ma- Ma'am Liz, sorry. I-, I I hope I answered your question. Kay Ma'am Liz, di ba? Yes, kay Ma'am. Kay Ma'am Liz Kataksil. Salamat po. How about po yung ibang mga Speakers sa atin, Dr. Dumafelis and Dr. Elia. Yeah, according, according to age, I big. <laughs> <laughs> ako ba muna? Hindi, <laughs> ako na. Yung maraming project. <laughs> well, uh, uh-huh. I don't know kung yung tanong ay failure sa proposal submission or failure talaga ng research. Kung failure sa research, uh, unfortunately, wala akong ganung experience kasi lahat ng research ko ay naging successful. So I can't share anything about that. Pero sa proposal submission, I had one. Uh, nag-submit ako noon, ganda-ganda ng pakagawa ko noon eh. Pero nabalitan ko na lang, okay, nawala, wala akong walang results. Nabalitan ko na lang, iba na gumagawa. <laughs> There are hard realities like that, ano, talagang umbisa na nananago yung idea mo. So sige lang, ang ma-advise ko doon sa nagkakaroon ng ganyang experience, lalo ng mga younger faculty, just keep on going. Uh, one failure should not uh, make you stop. You know, doing research. Just get going. Keep on going. And daming oppor- lalo na ngayon, napakaraming opportunities, funding opportunities. Sige lang. Kung talagang magandang research mo, may, may mag-fund niyan. Eh. So don't let it discourage you. Don't let it stop you. Uh, one failure, actually, that's how you learn uh, how to get up. Ano? Just get up and move on. And uh, try again. Ganun lang. Eventually, you'll succeed. So yun lang. And be patient again. <laughs> No correct. Like, ano, no, may... Sige. Uh, <laughs> ano, effects ang failure talaga po. No? I'll, I'll share to you non-technical and technical uh, failures. The, the non-technical is impending failure. Uh, una, um, nagko- we, we're dealing with um, 11 ethanol distilleries and uh, 10 sugar mills. So almost dalawang dosena yung dalawang projects. Unang problem, hindi nag-respond lahat. So uh, first base plan sa communication for data gathering ayaw mag uh, wala walang response. And second is uh, ayaw mabigay ng data. And yung aming project ay kailangan ma ma confirm namin ma validate yung halang uh, production system or process then mag-conduct ng material and energy balances. Um Naging malaking problema. Siguro mga almost four months nagsimula kami, wala kaming output. Biro mo yung kakabahan ka. Uh, outside yung nasa timeline mo. So, um, 
malaking tulong sa ano uh, mga kaibigan yung unang uh, uh, ginawa uh, try to connect with their friends no yung mga plant managers so umobra naman but not total the other one is the funding agency mismo and uh, they were able to complete yung uh, participation ng um, uh, almost 2000 na ethanol and sugar distillers However, pinapirma kami ng non-disclosure agreement. So sa lahat ay nakasign kami uh, for them to feel comfortable na hindi lalabas yung kanilang uh, process at as well as yung assessment ng business viability. Yung technical naman ay I have a uh, bio, uh, uh, biojet project sa DOST. Uh, ang naging problem namin ay... For more than a year, yung aming reactor ay pinasapasa. Una, may nag-bid. And kalagitnaan, inabandon kami. So, kinapos ng oras. And uh, uh, finally, hinawakan ng uh, DOST ang publication. But ang nangyari doon, it was uh, downgraded. Instead na mag-produce ng uh, biojet, nag-produce kami ng bio-oil as uh, base material Okay naman sa kanila because of the situation. Yung tama yan, sa present lang sa monitoring team nila and uh, present yung case and the request for amendment doon sa uh, project output. So yun. I hope nakasagot ako kay Lisa. <laughs> Thank you po to um, all our speakers. Um, meron pa po ba tayong pahabo na questions? Ang dami natin natutunan today. Ano po. Parang, ano, um, it's really scary when we are starting pa lang. Ako, actually, maraming pa akong mga tanong na prior to this, eh, hindi pa lang pa niya address. But uh, thanks to our speakers, I had a lot of, ano ba to, um, eureka moments. Tama ba yun? <clears throat> Ayun po. So, Ayan, thank you po ulit sa speakers natin. Um, if there are no more questions, uh, we can proceed with the awarding already. Jane, pa-share screen na lang po. Ma'am Ali. Go po, Ma'am Ali. Uh, as we award po, we'd like to invite the speakers to turn on their um, videos again so that we can take a picture of you together with your certificate. Isa isa na lang po namin kayo in, um, sa spotlight. Ano. Ayan po, Ma'am Angelique. <clears throat> Ako na po magbasa, Ma'am. Yes, Ma'am. I think po. So on behalf of the uh, Sayat Mentoring and Tenure Committee, so first, um, I would like to uh, give the Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. Marish S. Madlambayan for sharing his research and technical expertise in our webinar entitled Research Mentoring Strategies under the 2022 Sayat Series, Future Proofing and Enabling Strategies for Sayat Stakeholders, held on uh, 25th of October uh, 2022 via Zoom. So this is signed by our Dean Rosanna Marisi Amundo. Sir Marish, pa-smile po ulit na isang beses for the screenshot. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Angeline. Next po, we have... Ito lang, sir, na wala ka. I-highlight po lang po ulit. Spotlight natin sa Sir Ian. So again po, on behalf of the Sayat Mentoring and Tenure Committee, I would like to uh, give the Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. Rex Abidimofelis for sharing his uh, research and technical expertise in the webinar entitled Research Mentoring Strategies under the 2022 Sayat Series Future Proofing and Enabling Strategies for Sayat Stakeholders held this uh, 25th of October 2022 via Zoom. Signed by our Dean, Rosanna Marisi Amongo. Thank you, sir. Thank you. There one more smile po for the picture again. Thank you. <clears throat> so
So for our um, third speaker po, again, on behalf of the Sayat Mentoring and Tenure Committee, I would like to give the certificate of appreciation to Dr. Victor B. Elia for sharing his ex uh, research and technical expertise in the webinar entitled Research Mentoring Strategies under the 2022 Sayat Series, uh, Future Proofing and Enabling Strategies for Sayat Stakeholders, held this 25th of October 2022 via Zoom, signed by our Dean, Rosanna Marie Siamo. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So thank you once again po sa speakers natin. We are really, really very happy and privileged and honored, deeply honored that you are here with us today. And um, thank you po ulit sa Tenureship and Mentoring Committee headed by our committee chair, Dr. Josefa Angeli Villa. And um, thank you then po ulit to our colleagues who are here with us and who uh, took this time from their busy schedules to listen to the very insightful webinar we just had. And um, reminder po, yung ating webinar ay may evaluation link will be uh, flashed in the screen later. And uh, before we end, I'd like to call on the head of our committee for mentoring and tenureship. Dr. Thank Lee. you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you, ma'am Annie. So, siguro po ayan, I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, our speakers, Dr. Madlang Bayan, Dr. Dimafelis, and Dr. Elia, for accepting our invitation. I know very busy po tayong lahat. So thank you for your time. Thank you for uh, the very informative and relevant presentations. I think in my part, uh, in general, na key takeaway ko po from uh, our speakers. Uh, so we learn from our mentors as a mentee, not just uh, the knowledge needed for our thesis or dissertation. So hindi lang po yung mga concepts na regarding sa research natin. But most importantly, yung mga strategies and techniques now that we can use once we will be the ones to handle the uh, research na ipopropose po natin. And so we take advantage of the time na ibinibigay po sa atin ng mga mentors natin. And I hope lahat po tayo ang marami rin natutunan sa webinar natin ngayon. Of course, I would also like to thank our Dean, Dean Amongo, Dean Roseanne for the opening remarks and for her usual support sa mga committee activities. And I would also like to thank um, Ms. Jane para po dun sa generous uh, offering niya ng uh, tulong dito po sa technical management ng webinar. And uh, lastly, I would like to thank our committee members, si Ma'am um, Annie po for um, hosting the event. And of course, Dr. Detras as uh, the co-chair of the committee. Our committee members, um, thank you po sa support. And uh, dun po sa pagtulong sa pag-conceptualize ng ating uh, webinar uh, topic ngayon. So si Dr. Berines po, si Assistant Prof. Baldos, Dr. Lampayan, Dr. Zundo, Dr. Ventura, Dr. Gallegos, and uh, Ma'am Mavic po ng Sayat Dean's office. So thank you rin po sa lahat ng mga kumatend. Have a great uh, morning. Have a great day ahead. Thank you po again to everyone. Um, we shall end the Zoom in a while. A reminder lang po ulit yung ating evaluation form. Um, Miss Jane, pa-flash nga ulit po. Ayan, nandito na rin pala sa chat box. So you can just refer to that for our evaluation and yeah. happy lunch po sa lahat see you again in the next session kung kailan mo tayo magkakaroon ng pandemic thank you po ulit sir marish and sir rex and sir uh, vikelia we are really happy to have you salamat po Thank you for bye. Uh, we estimate heights. Um, there's another one.